Roger Staubach has had one of his best seasons ever, completing close to 60% of his passes during the regular season for 2,620 yards. In the last three games, Staubach has played nearly to perfection, hitting 71% of his passes for 514 yards and six touchdowns. With a running threat to go along with Staubach's passing, the team has been able to mix it up, and the result has been nearly 100 points in the last three games. Yeah, I think the last few weeks it's important to you know think about the job at hand, and uh, you think one step past it, you don't get there. So it's just important to play hard and play well, and uh, things will work out uh, the way they should. And hopefully we uh, we can play tough and hard against uh, Minnesota because you know they're coming off of a high beating Los Angeles. So it should be a really a a physical game and a tough football game. How does that compare to the the high that you're coming off of beating the Bears? Well, it helps. You know, I believe very strongly that you have to have uh, a good, you know, positive attitude and a feeling of confidence going into a football game. If you do, there's two or three, four plays a game that can go in your your direction where they might not uh, be if you're thinking about the, the mistakes of the past week and coming off the Denver game helped us against Chicago and hopefully. Uh, there won't be any overconfidence, and uh, the positive aspects of the Chicago game will help us against Minnesota. The Cowboys will host the Vikings Sunday at 4.30 with the winner advancing to the Super Bowl. This is John Gross, the Texas News. Passerbys probably wondered about the wisdom of local weathermen, but yes, it was snow piled in the parking lot of the Registry Hotel this afternoon. A refrigerated truck carrying five tons of snow from the Vikings Metropolitan Stadium left Minnesota yesterday. It was the Registry Hotels and the Viking Booster Club's idea of how to make the football team feel at home in Dallas. Sponsors plan to dump the Viking turf conditioner behind the Minnesota bench at game time tomorrow. But Texas Stadium officials politely told them to shovel it anywhere but on the AstroTurf. Viking running back Chuck Foreman enjoyed teaching some children about the properties of snowballs, but he doubts any of the white stuff will find its way to the field, and he says it wouldn't make any difference if it did. Oh, Dallas plays well anywhere. We play well anywhere, so the snow's not going to make any difference. The weather's not going to make any difference. It's just that, you know, who wants the game more? And that's, that's going to be uh, uh, the final, you know, decisive point. Sponsors still hope to somehow move some of the snow into the stadium. And even though Cowboy President Tex Schramm said it's the craziest thing he has ever heard of, and the truck driver said it's the most unusual cargo they've ever carried, you have to give someone credit for an original idea. Karen Parfit, the Texas News. Channel 2, New York. Last Monday night, playing on the quagmire that was the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, the Minnesota Vikings battled their way into the NFC Championship, beating the Rams 14-7. Some said it was the miserable field conditions that did it. So last week in Bloomington, Minnesota, these fans loaded up five tons of snow and sent this truck on its way to Dallas, Texas, where the Vikings are going to play the Cowboys for the NFC Championship. But today in Dallas, it has come up Viking weather anyway. It is right now 30 degrees in Dallas, Texas. Fans are huddled as they have come to see who will play Denver in the Super Bowl. Sid Brown, 45. Brown, 45. Hot, hot, hot. NFL Today is sponsored by Two Borg Gold, the golden beer of Danish Keens, Two Borg Breweries Limited, Baltimore, Maryland, and by Aladdin Stanley Thermos Bottles, the tough ones. And now from CBS Sports Control at Texas Stadium, here's Brent Musburger. 
Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to the NFC Championship game. I don't want to say anything, you guys, but who's the only person that picked Denver to win? <laughs> okay, to right, you win. All you right? win. All right, Can fine, I have a little win. credit now after all these years? What an amazing story that is, Irv. Denver beating Oakland 20-17. to 17. Well, you know, of course, the Oakland Raiders did everything they could to keep Denver off the board, but Denver's been playing excellent defense all year long and came through today with a big effort. So now here it is. Minnesota oh, and Dallas. Here. What is this? Fellas? <laughs> yeah. Irv, Brent. Yeah. Since you couldn't come to Minnesota this year, we brought you a little snow down. <laughs> is, this, is this real? Is real this, is, this is real. What, listen, I understand there's this truck outside with five tons of snow circling Texas Stadium and they won't let it in. Is that true? That's right. Why is that? I guess they're fighting it. They're fighting it. Listen, that's your problem. You worry about it, okay? Hummies are biking. Terrific. Thank you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that stuff's real. <laughs> You know, Phyllis, we've yeah. got a couple of excellent announcers who are standing by to give us some insight into this upcoming NFC game. And they have the best seat in the whole house, folks. They're sitting high above Texas Stadium here in Irving, Texas. Vin Scully and Alex Hawkins, they're joining me. They're right over here. Happy New Year's, Vin and Scully. Well, a very happy new year to you, Phyllis, to Brent Irvin, and everybody looking in. The Hawk and I are high and dry. We're wearing clean shirts for the occasion as befits the championship game. And it's the Minnesota Vikings, a miracle team to be here, I'm sure, against Dallas. Hawk, in your heart of hearts, do the Minnesota Vikings have a chance? Well, I got to tell you the truth. I hope they don't have a chance. I'm a Cowboy fan, have been a Cowboy fan. Throughout the year, they've been the best team in football with a 12-2 and record. Last week, though, you can't take anything away from the Vikings. They beat the Rams in a game no one thought they could win. They won the final game of the season against Detroit, and they're a class team when it comes to the playoffs. When you look at the Cole statistical story going into this game, you see that Dallas is first in offense, first in defense, first in the hearts of Texas, to say the least. Meanwhile, Minnesota is fifth and seventh, so it would appear that if they both play their best game, Dallas win will easily. And we'll still remember the line of Edwin Pope, the mini, uh, Miami sports editor who wrote, Sending Minnesota to the Super Bowl is like sending a straw man to cover a fire. <laughs> so we'll see. Let's go back to Phyllis Brandon Herb. And Ben, right now, I think first in the hearts of sports fans everywhere would have to be the Denver Broncos. Let's go live now to the bedlam that is Denver. Here is Dan Ryan from our affiliate KMGH. Dan? Brent, it is absolute pandemonium in Denver this afternoon. The Cinderella story of the NFL this year has been the Denver Broncos, and that story continues on. They have just upset the Super Bowl, the defending Super Bowl champions. The final score in Mile High Stadium is 20 to 17. It has been an unusual game. You wouldn't have believed it if you saw it. We have the fans here. The fans have been the story of, of Denver this whole year. And we're going to talk to a few of them and see what they feel. How do you feel about your Broncos right now? Wonderful. Is that all you got to say? I don't know. How do you feel about it? Did you really, terrific. Did you really think they were going to go to the Super Bowl yes, this sir. year? Yes, sir. There are. Now, they're going to be playing Dallas and Minnesota. Do you think they can handle either I team? I think they can. They can handle both of them. They can handle both teams. So there you have it. Um, again, the final score. Oakland has lost to the Denver Broncos 20 to 17. We flip it back now to NFL Today and Brent Musburger. All right, Dan, thank you very much. They're so high in Denver, they say they can handle both of these teams, Dallas and Minnesota. And the NFL today will continue on CBS Live from Dallas, Texas, in just a moment. Aladdin Stanley Thermos. Stanley, the tough all steel thermos bottle that's completely defendable and built to take a bounding year after year get the top one because a thermos bottle means more to you than a picnic it's some kind of tough thermos bottle hello everybody this is lowell thomas alaska a tough place to test car batteries and that's why we took motorcraft heavy duty batteries to alaska testing them in 50 gm chrysler and ford cars and trucks after six punishing months of alaskan pipeline country from cruel sub-zero winter to 90 degrees of summer not one single battery failed no matter what you drive wherever you drive ask for motorcraft batteries from ford tested tough in alaska so long Rise presents the three softeners. Rise, 
There are three softeners in Rise, three effective ingredients that help keep your beard moist and soft the whole shave through. Rise has three softeners, so silky. So so on the afternoon of January 15th on CBS, it'll be the Denver Broncos in the Super Bowl against either Minnesota or Dallas. Irv, let's talk a little bit about the Cowboys' fame flex defense. It's been sort of a mystery to a lot of people around the league, except it's been successful. This year, of course, they led the league in total defense, and their defense against the rush was one of the most successful in pro football. Of course, they contained Walter Payton last week, and this week they'll have to contain, of course, uh, Chuck Foreman. I was so interested in what Tom Landry had told you about how they contained Walter Payton with the flex. When the NFL's premier runner, Walter Payton, managed only 60 yards last week, few should have been surprised. For the Dallas Cowboys' doomsday defense has a habit of closing down exceptional runners in the biggest of all games, the playoffs. Lawrence McCutcheon of the Rams has yet to gain more than 58 yards during any of the three playoff meetings with Dallas. And Minnesota's Chuck Foreman has fared only a few yards better. In Super Bowl X, Pittsburgh's Franco Harris failed to be a deciding factor when Doomsday held him under his usual 100 yards. All of this was made possible by Tom Landry's flex defense, a system designed to stop the big runners. We just concentrate on that particular phase. I think whenever you concentrate on something, you can usually accomplish it, and uh, I believe the flex is very capable of stopping you know, anybody. I've always felt the 4-3 defense was uh, has more opportunities to, to stop a running game than anybody, anything else does consistently. The flex came from the idea that one lineman was up and the other one was back, you know, sitting on top of the tackle. So we can go inside, outside, or do anything we want to off of it, depending on what the offense is doing. For example, sometimes when, when Randy White's up, he may explode right off the line of scrimmage. You know, he'll be in the backfield very strong. And the next time, right on top of the guards, no, you know, he may move inside or outside immediately on the snap of the ball. Well, this causes doubt, you know, in the offensive line's assignments. When you back off a man off the line of scrimmage, you give him a better reading position. He's on the move very quickly when the play goes away from him. And obviously, he's putting himself in a position to move laterally very quick, and he can usually see the blocking pattern develop, so if they have something out wide, he can usually get out there in a hurry. Our, our uh, whole concept against Peyton was pursuit. Peyton's different than most. Uh, we don't have any problem getting a player where the, a good runner is. But with Peyton, you have to get two, three, or four players there because he can break so tackle so, so uh, easily. So this was our biggest difficulty getting ready for the Bears. This week, you'll be confronted with another great runner, Chuck Foreman. What kind of problems does he present to you? Uh, he has great ability. You know, he has great quickness, got good balance. He can catch the football. He can do so many different things uh, for the Viking team that uh, if we don't stop Foreman and, and control him uh, pretty well, then we don't have a hard time winning the football game. But the track record for Dallas's flex defense holds up. Number 44 could be in for a long afternoon. Chuck Foreman will have a dry surface today here in Dallas, but again, it is cold, only 30 degrees. And Phyllis, the quarterback who must attack that is Bob Lee, replacing the injured Fran Tarkenton. A very articulate man, of course, a 10-year veteran of the NFL, and a pleasant surprise to the Vikings. He's led them to this NFC championship. He spoke a little bit about that upset victory of the L.A. Rams. Nice guy. You'll like him. When Bob Lee replaced the injured Fran Tarkington at quarterback, most people felt the Minnesota Vikings were in big trouble. But in a must-win game against Detroit, Lee threw two touchdown passes, and Minnesota was in the playoffs for the ninth time in ten years. Last week, led by General Lee, the Vikes upset heavily favored Los Angeles, and now are one step away from a fifth Super Bowl appearance. What was the determining factor in the game against the Rams, Bob? Well, hindsight's always easier uh, than your sight at the, at the time, but uh, 
Uh, we didn't even realize how important that first drive would be when we scored the first touchdown. We knew the field was going to deteriorate, and it deteriorated very rapidly. It's been described as four inches of mud in the middle, and that is no exaggeration whatsoever. It was ankle-deep mud. I think the first drive put the Rams at such a disadvantage, I don't think they really ever overcame that. To the Rams' credit, they, they didn't use the weather as an excuse. In fact, they said they thought it would be to their advantage because they have the big running backs, the big offensive line. They are a much larger team than we are. Uh, I think maybe we adapted to the weather a little better a little sooner than they did. We have played in a lot of inclement uh, situations, especially in recent weeks. Many people have said that the Dallas Cowboys are a complete team. Do you agree with that? They have excellent personnel uh, from a physical standpoint. You don't see any fat people. Everybody looks like they uh, have great speed. Uh, they read their keys well. They move around well. Uh, I don't know if there is such an animal as a perfect ball club or a perfect football player, but uh, uh, supposedly they and the Rams had the best personnel in the NFC, and now they're the only one left. The Rams aren't playing for the championship, and the Minnesota Vikings are. Are you looking forward to being Martinized? <laughs> you know, I just heard that expression for the first time the other day from one of our linemen. Uh, I've seen Harvey on your interviews. They're, they're great. He does a super job, a very eloquent uh, gentleman, I shall say. I don't think he'll be a gentleman come Sunday. But, uh, no, I never look forward to being sacked, and I'm sure our people will do everything they can do to, to keep Harvey off me. How are you going to play the Cowboys? <laughs> We're going to play him tough and play him... Uh, for as long as we have to to win the ball game. Uh, uh, we're very confident we can win. We feel like uh, maybe we have destiny on our side. We've lost four Super Bowls. It's got to be our turn to win one. Uh, in order to get back to a Super Bowl, we have to beat a great football team, and that's what we're going to Dallas to do. Bob Lee at this moment, along with young Tommy Kramer, preparing for the playoff game against the Dallas Cowboys. And revenge is one of Lee's motives because back in 1971, he was selected ahead of Gary Quazzo and Norm Sneed, and the Dallas Cowboys defeated the Minnesota Vikings that afternoon. Bob Lee would like nothing better than to get even. And the NFL today will continue on CBS in just a moment. Tubor Gold, the golden beer of Danish kings by appointment to the Royal Danish Court. Tubor Gold. Only centuries of the Danish brewer's art could achieve its noble character for lightness and flavor. Tubor Gold, now brewed in America. So for about what you pay for the King of Beers, you can now have Tubor Gold, the golden beer of Danish kings. aerosol hairsprays to Vitalis Super Hold Pump Spray. The pump? Because it doesn't spray any aerosol propellants. The pump? Well, it costs less to use. Save money. It's because the pump is stronger. It can hold longer than the best-selling aerosol. The pump. Vitalis Super Hold Pump Spray. Now with an even finer spray. Why don't you switch from your aerosol to... The pump. rents trucks, all kinds of trucks. And Ryder does everything possible to make sure the wipers work, the headlights work, the brakes and steering and transmissions have been checked out. So practically nothing can stop a Ryder truck. Because when you rent trucks, you don't want them to give you problems. You want them to solve your problems. Ryder, the best truck money can rent. We've mentioned Fran Tarkenton, Minnesota also will be without injured running back Brent McClanahan. The Dallas Cowboys are in excellent physical condition for this game. Preston Pearson is back. He did not play at all in that 37-7 route of the Chicago Bears. I think you will enjoy Pearson's reflections on his competition with Tony Dorsett. When Dallas defeated Minnesota 16-10 in overtime earlier this season, 
The most valuable player for the Cowboys was number 26, Preston Pearson. Today in the NFC Championship, this 32-year-old running back again could be a key figure. For it is Pearson, the pinch hitter, who comes in cold in crucial situations to hit home runs for the Cowboys. I am the kind of guy that uh, you could picture as being in a John Havlicek kind of a role, a sixth man kind of a role, a guy who can come in and initiate uh, the offense to get going again or perhaps keep a drive going. Out of the shotgun in third and throw downs, Pearson is an absolute master at freeing himself in a forest of defenders. This ability to produce in the clutch has made him an invaluable part of the Dallas Cowboy offense. Here he is with a big reception against Chicago in last week's divisional playoff. But his favorite play is the screen pass. And that's what Minnesota will be watching out for. Pearson has a knack for setting up his blocks on this play. Then he will kick past the offensive wall at just the precise moment. Although Preston has moments of glory, the full-time hero and starting tailback is now Tony Dorsett, and the transition to substitute has been difficult. I can very honestly say that I beat Tony out of a job. I beat every back that came into the Dallas camp out of a job. And uh, that's not to take anything away from anybody. But I won the job, period. And I held the job number one for nine ball games. And when the time came for a change, Nobody beat me out of a job. It was an organizational change. But when you're not a starter, uh, it's much more difficult, I think, to get involved into the game emotionally, number one. Uh, when you're a starter, everything starts from the very beginning. Uh, when you come off the bench and go into the game, you're not sure exactly how people feel about you coming into the game, number one. Uh, you're not exactly sneaking in. Uh, they see you come in, and so they say, well, here comes Pearson. I don't particularly uh, like the role, and I don't have to like it, uh, and I don't, but I'm here to win, and I'm here to go on and uh, hopefully win a Super Bowl. The greatest thing that has come out of uh, my experiences in football is the fact that every year there's been a challenge. Uh, someone's been given my job every year, or I've had to work like hell to, just to maintain a job. And I think once football is all over, uh, these are going to be the greatest assets that I'll have as a man. Irv Cross and Preston Pearson's having his greatest year, and we certainly all agree. Now let's go down to Jack Whitaker on the field with observations about the playoffs. Jack? Thank you very much, Phyllis. As we know, Denver has been a hotbed of football fanaticism all week with their beloved Broncos. And one would have thought that so would Dallas. This very sophisticated football city has hosted two important games this week. The NFC Championship, which we're about to see between the Cowboys and Minnesota, and tomorrow's game at the Cotton Bowl, which may decide the National Collegiate Championship between the beloved Longhorns of the University of Texas and the hated enemy from Notre Dame. But strangely and curiously enough, this has been a very quiet city this weekend. They've taken particularly this championship game very quietly. And I say curiously because we must never, any of us, forget for one minute that Texans, all of them, believe they invented this game of football. They don't want to know about Princeton and Rutgers. They know they invented it in this state, and they know that only Texas boys can play it well. And football here ranks ahead of all that oil and the cattle and the Miss America contest winners in the electronic industry and spare ribs and chili and the Alamo. So that's why it's curious that they're taking this game in stride. Now, the reason might be that Dallas Cowboy fans are a little wary. They remember when Minnesota knocked them off a couple of years ago. They remember too clearly that Los Angeles did the same thing last year. But the other reason may be a little more ominous, and that is taking Minnesota too lightly. Minnesota, this team born to the purple, finds themselves tremendous underdogs coming into this game. Yes, they are without Fran Tarkenton. Yes, they have seven men over 35 years of age on their squad, but they like old players. They think they play better. And remember this, they got here because they deserved it. They beat Detroit and Los Angeles when they had to, and Dallas has to beat them and not the Rams today. Remember also, it's the last Sunday of the second season, the season of survival. And nobody yet has computerized the bounces a football can take.
I don't know where Jack had his room, but all night long I kept hearing choruses of Here Come the Irish. <laughs> it wasn't so quiet where I was. And the NFL today will continue on CBS with Jimmy the Greek in just a moment. Let's buy our small computer from the giant computer company. You can't beat Goliath. No. Goliath. Right, David? Sir, let's go with Wang. Nobody Wang. makes a better small computer or a word processor. They're giant killers. Oh. It happened before. It can happen again, because nobody's hungrier than Wang. He's right. By appointment to the Royal Danish Court since the reign of Frederick the IX, Tubor Gold proclaimed the golden beer of Danish kings. Today, this light beer of noble heritage is brewed in America, and Tubor Gold is affordable to everyone. In fact, for about what you pay for the king of beers, you can now have Tubor Gold, the golden beer of Danish kings. If you buy oil filters, you're interested in two things, protecting your engine and getting the best buy for your money. Now, regardless of what you've had, an oil filter has just one job to do, to keep your oil clean. This is the ACE filter. It cleans your oil as well as these, and it costs less. You'll pay more for these, but you won't get a better filter. ACE gives you your money's worth. Jimmy the Greek, sponsored by Dutch Master Cigars. They really are masters at Dutch Masters. Happy New Year, Greek. 30 degrees in Dallas. Will that affect the outcome of this football game? Let me ask you one question. Isn't it cold for both sides? <laughs> I guess you're right, Greg. Okay. <laughs> Do you still give Dallas the big edge? Well, they have to have it, Brent. You know, I mean, let's face it. They have Starbucks. And that's, uh, that's the big thing, of course, over Lee, because he has that extra dimension of running, which is the biggest thing of all. They've got a better defensive team. I don't see many checks there for Minnesota. Well, th but you know, I'll tell you one thing. There aren't any checks there for Minnesota, but for the last two weeks, Minnesota's just absolutely played Super Bowl. And here's Roger, which is, the, I think, their biggest edge myself. I mean, because he has that extra dimension, and he will run, and there he goes. And he'll run today. That's the one thing that's going to make Minnesota be a lot of trouble. Jimmy, how about the defense for the Dallas Cowboys? They were terrific against Chicago. Brent, let me tell you, though, the one thing that everybody forgets is that the first eight games, the reason why Dallas was 8-0 is because they turned the ball over two and three times to the offensive team by plays like such as this. I think that's Waters there. I mean, you know, they gave the ball to the offensive team in beautiful field position, you know, two and three times every game. The intangible for the Cowboys? Four weeks on the road for Minnesota. You know, they were at Oakland, at the Rams, at Detroit, and here they are now. While the Rams have been at home four weeks in a row. I mean, the Dallas has been at home four weeks in a row. I mean, that's an intangible product. Jimmy, we're going to be right back to take a look at Oakland losing to Denver as the Broncos head to the Super Bowl, and the NFL today continues in just a moment. The Dutch Masters buyers are in France for the international auction of rare African Cameroon tobacco. There are two secrets they must keep to win some of the best leaf for Dutch masters. The exact leaf they want and the price they'll pay. It's a nice color. When their bid is opened by the French auctioneers, they'll learn if they've won some of the best. Acheteur Dutch Masters. Taste the taste the world competes for in a Dutch Masters Cameroon cigar. They really are masters at Dutch Masters. The Denver Broncos are going to the Super Bowl. Say it over and over and say it slowly. <laughs> there they are. As you take a look at Craig Morton going to Haven Moses, and it was 7-3 to three Denver on this play. Now watch Stabler go to Bolitnikoff over the middle, and this is the play that knocked Freddie out with a dislocated shoulder. They made a sandwich out of it. And here is going to be the controversy that will live on in this particular ball game. Lytle fumble, but the ball was ruled dead. 
and Denver retained possession. And from an end zone view, the view of that, it certainly looked like a fumble. John Keyworth now sweeps for the touchdown, and suddenly it was 14 to 3. But the Oakland Raiders did not bow out easily. Stabler going to his all pro tight end, Dave Casper, for a touchdown. And after Mann's extra point, it was 14 to 10, and there was time. Now watch linebacker Rice. Here is Stabler looking over the side, and it is intercepted. That was Swenson of the Denver Broncos bringing that back, and Morton going to Moses again for the touchdown, but they missed an important extra point, or at least it seemed very important at the moment. It was 20 to 10. And so the Raiders suddenly closed to within a field goal. Casper again, it was 20 to 17. Now the Broncos kill the clock as Otis Armstrong picks up the first down and the clock counts down 20 to 17. Denver goes to New Orleans. Who will join them? Will it be Minnesota or will it be Dallas? We will find out shortly. For Jimmy the Greek, Irv Cross, Phyllis George, I'm Brent Musburger and we hope you enjoy the NFC Championship on CBS. The NFL Today is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer who invite you to see their better ideas for 78, including Fairmont, the Ford in your future. Firestone with 24,000 car service bays coast to coast to serve your automotive needs. Avis, the We Try Harder company. And by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. tuned as the NFL Today continues after this word from your local station. Enjoy two spectacular parades, the Cotton Bowl Festival Parade and the Tournament of Roses Parade, followed by the big game, Notre Dame versus Texas in the Cotton Bowl, all tomorrow on CBS. Hey, heard about the new Hall of Reptiles and Amphibians at the Museum of Natural History? Huh? Does that mean yes? If you're a small businessman, European American Bank announces a way for you to have money instantly for inventory, expansion, or whatever you need, whenever you need it. Introducing a new service, the EAB Small Business Credit Account. Qualify, and you get a credit line of up to $25,000. Do you use it? You just write a check. It's really that simple. European American Bank's new Small Business Credit Account. It puts money in your hands when you need it. Those Skylab astronauts relied on Honeywell for fire detection. So do hospitals, schools, and skyscrapers across America. Honeywell also builds a smoke and fire detector for your home with space-age dependability. But at a down-to-earth price, you can pay less. But isn't it worth a few dollars more for a Honeywell smoke detector? Trust Honeywell to protect your family. Available at Channel and JM Fields. Channel 2, New York. From Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, CBS Sports presents the National Conference Championship game between the Minnesota Vikings and the Dallas Cowboys. Hi well, everybody, I'm Vin Scully, along with Alex Hawkins. Welcome to the great state of Texas, where the Dallas Cowboys are number one in the hearts of just about everybody, except a small contingent from Minnesota. And the story, I guess, going into the ballgame is not, can Dallas win? They're a big favorite, as you know. But is there a possibility of a Minnesota victory? And if so, how can they do it? Hawk, what do you think? I think Bud Grant probably summed it up. He said if it was a seven-game series, like the World Series, that possibly Dallas would uh, win that one. But he said it's one game and anything can happen. And I believe with the character that team has, there is an outside possibility. Bob Lee, the quarterback of Minnesota, has inherited a chore normally handled by Fran Tarkenton. Would you say he's equal to the occasion? I'd say that last week he called just about as good fine a game as you want to see under the conditions in Los Angeles. Against Detroit, he looked good. Now, when Minnesota has the ball, they will be up against the dreaded flex here in Dallas. 
And the question will be, can Foreman run on it? And can Bob Lee pass? But right now, they are introducing the players down on the field, and we'll take a look at him. Starting off, the Minnesota Vikings coming out, and there is Mick Tengelhoff playing in his 19th playoff game, and veterans would be the name of this game for sure. Right behind him will be Steve Riley from the University of Southern California. Florida A&M left guard Charles Goodrum, number 68. At right, number 62, that would be Ed White. Here comes Ron Yeri, number 73. Then 83, the tight end, Stu Voigt. The boys who'll handle the football, Ahmad Rashad, a wide receiver, number 28. Backed up by Sammy White, number 85. After Sammy White, we get into the running backs. Number 35, Robert Miller playing in place of Brent McClanahan. And number 44, and he will have to carry the ball 30 times today at least, Chuck Foreman. The quarterback is Bob Lee, a nine-year veteran out of the College of Pacific. So Bob Lee at the helm for the Minnesota Vikings as they try to pull off the upset. The Vikings coming in 9-5, and five, having knocked off the Los Angeles Rams. And for the Vikes, they have six members on the Pro Bowl. However, they have been a team that has hurt itself with 18 turnovers. More remarkably, when you consider they did not have a turnover in the rain and slop in Los Angeles. The Dallas Cowboys forced seven turnovers last week, and so we'll take a look at them. And at 62, the center, John Fitzgerald from Boston College. Number 73 at left tackle out of Oklahoma, retiring this year, Ralph Neely. Left guard, number 68 out of Virginia Union, Herb Scott. The right guard, number 64 from Penn State, Tom Rafferty. At right tackle, number 67 out of Stanford, Pat Donovan. The tight end, number 89, out of Michigan State, Billy Joe Dupree. Wide receiver, number 83, out of Hawaii, Golden Richards. Wide receiver, number 88, from Tulsa, Drew Pearson. The big man in Texas, one year ago today, he was leading Pittsburgh to a bowl victory, number 33, Tony Dorsett. The other running back, out of Houston, Bob Newhouse, number 44. And at quarterback, nine years from the United States Naval Academy, Roger Stalwack. There is Tom Landry, one of the winningest coaches in all time. If he wins today, it would be his 13th playoff victory, and that would break a tie that exists right now with Don Shula. So the Dallas Cowboys. And the Minnesota Vikings ready to crack heads in a few moments. We already know that Denver has defeated Oakland, and so we are a couple of ways from New Orleans. It'll either be Dallas and Denver or Minnesota. Hawk, any last-minute thoughts going into the ball game? Well, of course. But I'm not going to give them to you until Tommy Lloyd comes in here. He Tommy can't Lloyd, play too. He's a graduate of SMU with a degree of music. He leads the upper Dallas Jazz Band, and he has been playing the national anthem solo for 12 years here. So Tommy, front and center for our national anthem. Our national anthem, as Mr. Tommy Loy and his trumpet provide the musical background.
In seeing those balloons being released from the far end, and I'm sure you are well aware of the snow background with the Minnesota Vikings, how it was transported down here from Minnesota. We should point out the question was, were they going to be able to get any of the snow in the ballpark? We have not seen any. Reportedly, fans had brought suitcases full of snow into the stadium. That has not been substantiated. However, when one of the Dallas Cowboy men came out on the field, a fan threw a snowball at him. So there's some snow in here anyway. The captain's meeting, Jim Marshall. In his 19th playoff game, number 70, Hi, along John, with Mick Tinglehoff. Captains of Dallas meet the captains of Minnesota. Staubach, Pearson, Good to see you. Good to see you. Salty and Company. You'll call the coin in the air, please. Head. Heads he calls. Heads it is. You want to receive? Just as you're standing. Okay. Minnesota wins the toss and will receive. So the Minnesota Vikings won the toss and now our officials with our referee Pat Haggerty the umpire Gordon Wells then you have Al Sabato Dean look Tom Kelleher Dick Dolak Fred Silva the alternate along with Leo Miles and the Vikings will receive. I talked to Art McNally about that last night about Fred Silva being the alternate official he said despite the controversial calls he is still rates very high in our opinion. I think it's a nice gesture on their part. Right you are Alex as we look at a close up of Tony Dorsett one year ago in a bowl game leading Pittsburgh to victory and he ran for over 200 yards that day and now of course in the big leagues in the NFC championship game it'll be Tony Dorsett and the Cowboys as we look now at the two men to receive Manfred Moore number 36 will be deep Sammy White will be up short to his right and to his left Robert Miller. Three men in the middle of the block Keller along with Hamilton and Yeri and we're waiting for Efren Herrera the pride of Guadalajara Efren who has been the NFC all pro kicker he led the conference with 93 points and Herrera will kick it off and in one moment the NFC championship game gets underway to find out who plays Denver in the Super Bowl. Belts it deep. That means Manfred Moore on his seven yard line to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, to the 35. At the 38, Mike Hegman brought him down, making first contact. Right there with him was Bruce Huther. So we'll take a look at the Vikings offensively. Up front, Riley, Goodrum, Tinglehoff, White, and Yeri, the men who'll handle the football. Ahmad Rashad, Sammy White, and the tight end, Stu Boyd. In the backfield, Bob Lee at the helm, Robert Miller and Chuck Foreman, the running back. First series will be critical for the Vikings. They can get seven points on the board. Their chances are greatly enhanced, I'll tell you that. First and ten from the Viking 38-yard line. And it's Chuck Foreman with Bob Miller leading a pack, and he gets it to the 40-yard line. A pickup of two, so it'll be second and eight. Let's take a look at the pokes now the Cowboys defensively with Jones Pugh White and Martin and by the way number 75 Jethro Pugh in his 21st playoff game Henderson Brunig and Lewis and the linebackers Barnes Kyle and at safeties Waters and Harris on the sidelines keeping his arm loose and ready Roger Staubach. second and eight from the 40 yard line White wide left Rashad right play action fake to Miller. Down the left side, broken up by Aaron Kyle. The pass was intended for Sammy White. That time the Dallas was in that flex defense. If you remember what the 49ers did to him, they scored about 35 points on Dallas in just that way. Flex defense is very effective against the run, but not so effective against the pass because you touch down your pass rush. 53-year-old Tom Landry, the only coach that Dallas ever had, and his overall record, 161 victories. There is Doug Dumler, who did a remarkable job of snapping the ball in the mud in Los Angeles. Third and eight from the 40-yard line, slot left. White is inside Grimm. Foreman. To Miller who fumbled and I think Dallas has recovered. Let's see. Harvey Martin fell on it. Harvey Martin. 
Robert Miller on what appeared to be an unsure handoff. Take another look. Let's take a look at it and see where the ball comes loose. The handoff is made there. He just lost his poor exchange some way or another. I don't believe he ever had possession. There's Martin 79 coming down on it in a big break, obviously, for Dallas. It looked like it went just under the left arm of Robert Miller, and he didn't have control of it at all. So it is first and 10 on the Minnesota 39 yard line, and the Cowboys in a big spot right away. Drew Pearson is left. Jay Saldy on a wing. Newhouse in Dorset behind Starbuck. Robert Newhouse. And he is hit by McNeil and he carries McNeil to the 32 yard line. Dallas offensively Neely who is going to retire after this year Scott Fitzgerald Rafferty and Donovan. Golden Richards Drew Pearson in the tight end Billy Joe Dupre in the backfield Roger Staubach along with Tony Dorsett and Robert Newhouse second and three. In motion is Drew Pearson. One fake by Starbuck. As deep down the left side is Golden Richards. Touchdown Dallas. All of a sudden. What about it, Ben? Reaching down in the bag. Faked a little quick, quick screen that time. Golden Richards just took off. They overcommitted. Take a look at Golden Richards. Number 83. Look at him. He just lags there, watches Bobby Bryant come up, try to force that quick screen. Gets behind him like a stand-up two-bagger, Ben. A disastrous turn of event for Minnesota and a big play for Roger Staubach and the Cowboys. A 32-yard scoring pass. Golden Richards all alone. Bobby Bryant, nothing to do but watch him fall in the end zone. Herrera trying to make it 7-0. No good. And so Efren Herrera shocks this crowd by failing the point after. He was 39 for 41 in the regular season, but he missed that one. And so in the early going, Dallas has drawn first blood, leading 6 0. Ford introduces the new Futura. A dramatic combination of styling and technology for 1978 and beyond. Futura, its striking design is the result of computer modeling and extensive aerodynamic testing. Its excellent fuel economy results in part from the use of lighter weight high strength metals in Futura's construction. And Futura's ride is the result of a newly created advanced front suspension system. Futura. In a world where cars are looking more and more alike, it represents a change. A dramatic combination of styling and technology from 1978 and beyond. Realistically priced for today. See your Ford dealer for a personal test drive. In less than two minutes, Dallas leading Minnesota six to nothing. Harvey Martin recovering a fumble by Robert Miller and Staubach cashing in chips with two plays. A 32 yard touchdown pass to Golden Richards for six. Efren Herrera missing the point after. We have 1322 to go in the first quarter. The chairs aren't warm yet if they heat up at all here in Texas today. And it's Manfred Moore to the 15 to the 20. To the 25 30 35. 40, 42, Herrera tried to bring him down and couldn't. Randy Hughes finally hit him at the 42-yard line. A big return by Manfred Moore. Manfred Moore came over in a trade from San Francisco. Last week he was outstanding on punt returns for the Vikings. That's something you don't see happen to the Cowboys very often. Mike Ditka and his special teams doing a heck of a job this year. Look at Efren there. He's a pretty good athlete. He has made a lot of tackles on kickoff teams, unlike so many of the other kickers around. The first tackle Herrera ever made on a kickoff for Dallas, he knocked the receiver unconscious. First and ten. Foreman barreling across the 45, out to the 47-yard line. And, of course, for Minnesota, they need to do something to pump up the spirits. Chuck Foreman is not a bad way to start. What a week he had last week. Over 100 yards in that mud at, in Los Angeles. Played a great inspirational game last week. Chuck Foreman and Robert Miller, there's two tall Jones, two tall at 6'9, 265. 
His mother is five five and a half which is a shocker. Second and six from the 47. Second man Robert Miller and he was Jethro Pugh tried to hook him slowed him up and down he went. Pugh trying to bring him down with one arm but Robert Miller pretty tough little hombre at 5'11", 204 pounder out of Kansas playing for the injured Brent McClanahan. Remember that Walter Payton in 13 carries could get only 60 yards against this tough Dallas defense. So the challenge is out there for the Vikings. Third and four from almost a long five. Lee looking left and throws it out of the county. What? Ahmad Rashad was over there and Lee took a lick. Do that thing nine feet over the receiver's head. So the Minnesota Vikings won the toss, and that's about all so far. Looks concerned. From here, you would have to think she might be a Minnesota Looks fan. Like a blonde Bar Barbara Streisand. So on a fourth and four, Neil Claybo will be punting from his own 35-yard line. Larry Prince is deep. And Butch Johnson will handle it. And Look Johnson out. is staggered but stays on his feet and finally goes down just short. It was Studwell who hit him first. And he finally brought it back up across the 20 yard line, as you saw. So we've got 11 minutes and 42 seconds to go in the first quarter. Dallas 6, Minnesota nothing. Inside this new Firestone radial tire is an improved steel cord with five million miles of developmental testing. Where once we used five strands, we now use ten strands of steel. Seven, around two, wrapped by one. A cord construction so important, Firestone named the tire for it. Seven, two, one. The new steel-belted radial 721. Now, from Firestone. Benny Barnes, a six-year man out of Stanford, injured on that last punt. And Barnes slowly coming off the field. And meanwhile, on the sidelines, it's the Dallas Cowpoak against the Minnesota Vikings. Get after it. Meanwhile, Roger Staubach and company will put it in play first and ten. The ball just shy of the 20-yard line. Dallas leading 6-0, 11-42 in the first quarter. Drew Pearson is wide right. Robert Newhouse grabbed by Fred McNeil at the 20 and he falls forward to the 22 because it was a high tackle. Benny Barnes being ministered to right now. Looks like he got a kick in the inside of the right knee. I don't believe it's serious. He'd probably be back in the ball game. Mark Washington has been a starter on that side and was in fact for two or three years before Barnes moved him out of there. He could play very capably. On that last play, Tony Dorsett getting up very slowly. Second and eight from the Cowboy 22. Pearson is wide left, Golden Richards wide right. Dorsett, deep man out of the eye. Staubach on a draw to Dorsett. He runs by Matt Blair. Jeff Seaman brings him down, and Paul Kraus goes over the top of his helmet as he is just short of the first down. It would figure he'll need a yard. Dorsett is getting up kind of slow. Look at that. He took a lick on the previous play. I'm surprised he went into the huddle hurting from the previous play. I'm surprised they gave him the ball that time. He got an injury last week, came back in, and two plays later scored. A guy like that. Whoa. Of course, Roger Staubach, the quarterback, played with a bad thumb, a bad bruise. In fact, Blackie Sheridan, talking about Staubach, said he sits down as often as the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Roger play with anything. He's quite a competitor. So he's Very expecting Dorsett today. to do the same. Pearson wide left. Butch Johnson wide right. Both backs go out. 
And so does Staubach. And he runs into Seaman, who brings him down just very close to the first down. It'll be a question as to where they spotted. Pretty near, but not plum. Not quite. Evidently a pretty good job on the Minnesota secondary with all the receivers covered and Roger trying to go for the first down couldn't do it. I think Roger might have had a run in mind that time he didn't take a very deep drop that time then. Manfred Moore goes back to the Viking 32 yard line and Danny White will be kicking from the Dallas 15. 935 in the first quarter it is six to nothing Dallas. And it'll bounce just above the 40. It'll go out of bounds at the 41 yard line. So Minnesota for the second time gets pretty good field position. It'll be the third time they get their hands on the football and the Cowboys cashed in their first set in two plays to lead six nothing. Huddlemeyer, Mr. Huddlemeyer, Mr. Huddlemeyer, Mr. Huddlemeyer. Mr. Huddlemeyer, excuse me, but I understand you reserved an Avis car in Buffalo. Uh -huh. Well, not only is your car going to be there, oh. but even now, Avis is checking the engine, tires, even the ashtrays. Nobody beats our car care program. So relax. Avis wants you to enjoy your trip in the air and on the ground. Oh, good. Reach your home, Avis. Avis, we don't know another way. Have a nice trip. Huh. A lot of companies say they have just what you need and wind up selling you just what they have. That's not how it is with Xerox. We're the only company that has 18 different copiers and duplicators to choose from and specialists who are trained to help you choose. So with Xerox, you never have to live with more than you want or settle for less than you need. Medical miracle or cruel hoax. 60 minutes, incognito at a health spa. Tonight only at 8.30, 7.30 Central and Mountain, 7 Pacific time. Minnesota will put it in play. First and 10, the ball just across the 41-yard line. Dallas leading six to nothing. Robert Miller fumbled, Harvey Martin recovered. Roger Staubach, a 32-yard touchdown pass to Golden Richards. Bob Lee, play action fake, setting up and goes down the right side over the head of Sammy White. Mark Washington in there for the injured Benny Barnes was covering the receiver. And had him covered all the way that time too. Sammy White and Bob Lee. Lee is quite a story. His dad was the news editor and bureau chief for the Associated Press. He used to go into locker rooms in San Francisco and get post game quotes with the biggest event in his life when he was 10 years old. He had an infection of the frontal sinus and the bone around the eyeball. He had an operation that saved his life, and 22 years later, here he is in the championship game. Second and 10 from the 42, Chuck Foreman running into a crowd and brought down shy of the 45. Jethro Pugh and Ed Jones, too tall. Last two games have been his strongest ever in his career. He's really coming on. Let's take a look at O'Neill. Let's take a look at it. Chuck Foreman, number 44, with a handoff. Look at Ed Jones there, number 72, and what a grasp. Jamming it all up. Well, they drafted him number one, and they thought he was going to be the world beater, and he was kind of slow. He's been a steady performer, but in the last two weeks, they tell me he's come on to be one of the really top defensive players in the game. Big play, third and eight. Rashad wide left, wide in a slot inside, Grimm to the right. Back staying in now the release to Foreman and he gets across midfield and picks up the first down. Cliff Harris met him head on as he went hurtling through the air. Well you so wonder what Foreman. You wonder why he doesn't have more injuries than he does as reckless as he plays. What a reckless abandoned player he is. Bob Lee with a rollout couldn't throw a safer pass than this. He needs to get a couple completions settle him down a little bit. Watch this. The guy's legs are still running in the air. Mark Washington upended him and Cliff Harris hit him head on. So the Vikings have it first and 10 on the Cowboy 47. Rashad is left, White is right. Here goes Robert Miller behind a Charles Goodrum block and he gets across the 45. Goody number 68 was leading the pack. 
We mentioned veteran teams. Mick Tinglehoff and Jim Marshall for the Vikings in their 19th playoff game. Jethro Pugh, number 75 for Dallas, in his 21st playoff game. And on the sideline, Benny Barnes getting that right knee tape. Figures that Benny Barnes will be back a little bit later. Second and seven. And Foreman gets to the 40-yard line. So he still has three yards to go for the first down to keep the drive alive. My boy Charlie Waters on the tackle. Clemson University. Come on to be a, one of the top safety men in football. Three interceptions last week in that game against the Bears. That tied a record that goes back to 1944. So Charlie Waters, number 43, along with Cliff Harris. Charlie just had a little baby. Baby girl about uh, about a week ago, I guess. Ten pounds. Third down and three from the 40. And it is Foreman. Who else? And he is across the 35 for the first down. Brought down by who else? Cliff Harris. Nick Tinglehoff, a veteran of so many years. 16 of them. And Ed White. Watch their blocks this time. Good one by Yeri, too. Big gaping hole, as you see there. Cliff Harris finally nails it. The Dallas bench, and in particular Robert Newhouse, keeping his hands warm. First and ten from the 34. Lee looking down the right side. Throws it through the hands of Sammy White. Just over the fingertips of Mark Washington and out of bounds before Waters could get over. Sammy White was shut out last week against the Rams. That's unusual for him. Heck of a receiver. Rookie of the year, as everybody knows, last year. Nine touchdown passes this year. He can hurt you deep. The Vikings put the ball in play first and 10 on their own 42. They have now reached the Cowboy 34, second and 10. Bud Grant surrounded by his men. 50 year old, he has won over 107 regular games. Second and 10 from the Cowboy 34. White is inside Rashad in a slot right. Play action fake to Foreman. Lee down the right side, no good. Intended for Ahmad Rashad. Mark Washington was there and apparently they're going after the corner and the coverage was there slips a little bit I believe let's look at Rashad yep slipped on that turf it's been raining all week here in Dallas and until yesterday that field could be a little bit wet from that so it is third and ten from the thirty four. Six to nothing Dallas Efren Herrera missing the point after and now the Vikings try to keep a drive alive they have Bob Grimm wide right with white in a slot Rashad is wide left <laughs> Lee just over the hands of the intended receiver Robert Miller and Charlie Waters there 45 trying to angle it out of bounds. And he goes for the corner and gets it out. And it'll go out of bounds at the 11-yard line. That's where the Cowboys will put it in play. First and 10 from their own 11. The 23-yard punt with no return. 5.52 to go in the first quarter. 6-0 Dallas. This signal is searching for a General Electric VIR color TV. The Signals VIR. It lets broadcasters automatically control the color of your TV picture on many programs. Watch this GE VIR set use the signal and automatically adjust flesh tones, background colors, the entire color picture. VIR. And General Electric has just won an Emmy for being the first to use VIR in television sets. This is GE Performance Television. With the price of most things going up, the sticker price of Pinto, the best-selling American small car, is coming down. New 78 model Pintos with more standard features will have a lower sticker price than last year's model comparably equipped. Important features are now standard, like AM radio, power front disc brakes, rear window defroster, tinted glass, and protective body side moldings. Ford Pinto, the best-selling American small car. Now more car for the money than last year. At Ford, the better ideas keep coming. The 1978 CBS Sports Spectacular presenting an exciting calendar of outstanding events. 
in January, the WBC World Light Heavyweight Championship between defending champion Miguel Cuello and Matei Parlov. The World Lightweight Championship, Roberto Duran against Esteban De Jesus, also coming up. So that'll be 1978 CBS Sports Spectacular, something to see. First and 10 from the 11. Tony Dorsett gets out across the 10 yard line before jumping over people who go down shy of the 15. Herbert Scott, number 68 on the trap block here on Eller. Let's look at it. Eller, he got a good position on him that time. Closed it down pretty good, though. Last week, those Viking linebackers played just an exceptional game. They're going to have to do the same thing today if they're going to contain this high powered Dallas offense. So Dallas with a second and seven, the ball on their own 14 yard line. Staubach flipping back to Newhouse. Robert Blair gets him, but he gets away, and then the rest of the Vikings close in on him. So Matt Blair had him behind the line of scrimmage, couldn't hold on to him, still was able to come back and gather him in. Tom Landry, boy, what a story. The sixth all time winning list. He came in with 161 overall victories during his reign. And as we mentioned, if he wins today, he'll have won 13 playoff games, breaking a tie with Don Shula. The Staubach leading 6 nothing with a third and five. And they'll load up the shotgun, going to the slight spread. Staubach down the right side intended for Dorsett. Matt Blair was right there with him. No chance. Carl Eller put a little rush on that time, and Staubach threw it a little bit before he wanted to. Dorsett was coming wide open that time. Had plenty of field to run, too. Danny White, who will be coming in to punt for Dallas, has averaged 39 yards a punt. Let's watch it out of that shotgun from the way Rogers sees it. Look at Ellen. Led the team in sacks this year with about 14. Boy, he's been a steady performer through the years. And a great individual, too, Dan. Danny White will be kicking to Manfred Moore. White from his own five-yard line. Under a rush by McNeil, but he got it away. Manfred Moore, a fair catch. Otherwise, Tom Henderson would have knocked him into Oklahoma. Henderson would right down there underneath it. Get it on the uh, right side of your picture there. You see the rush there. Almost That's got it. How he got it out of there, I don't know. That's Fred McNeil, number 54, who just missed smothering it. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. First and 10 from the Cowboy 48. Lee to Robert Miller. Still on his feet across the 45. Underneath at the very bottom making the play was Tom Henderson. Oh, the Cowgirls. They get a lot of mileage out of those cheerleaders, haven't they? That's beautiful women, too. By the way, Benny Barnes, number 31, is back in action after getting that right knee tape. So Mark Washington who did a good job in his stead, comes out, Barnes is back in there. Second and seven, the ball just inside the 45. Foreman is gobbled up, and what a hit, a fumble, and Big Jones had racked him. The Cowboys seem to think that they have recovered, and now it is made official. It's oh, a, what a hit by yes, Jones. Did. Took the good, strong inside rush that time. Beat Ron Yeri, I suppose. Let me take a look at it and see. Behind the quarterback, let's take a look. Look at it. Oh, brother. Yes, sir. Robert Miller had to block on him that time. It wasn't Yeri beat at all. Just a good, solid inside rush that time. Gambled and gambled right. Then it would be the second fumble recovery by Harvey Martin, who recovered Robert Miller's fumble earlier, and now this one by Foreman. First and 10 Cowboys on their own 45. Six nothing Dallas. Robert Newhouse and McNeil straightens him up along with Seaman and they bring him down at the 48 yard line. Remember Minnesota had a pension for turnovers 18 during the regular year. Fred McNeil every game gets a little better a little stronger. Well they're a determined group. Don't count the Vikings out then. If determination means anything don't count them out. There's a Viking and a cowboy. Peaceful enough right now. <laughs> Second and seven for the Cowboys on their own 48. Golden Richards wide left. Drew Pearson in motion. 
Play action fake to Dorsett and Staubach releases to Robert Newhouse and right there waiting is Matt Blair to take him down. However, they have moved the ball into Viking territory and they need almost three yards for a first down. Six feet nine, too tall Jones who made that savage hit on Chuck Foreman. Too tall, tall sitting down. Tell you what, when he is sitting down, it's so tall, it takes him 32 minutes to stand up, Then <laughs> He's 6'9", a lot of man, as Chuck Foreman can attest to. Bud Grant, who has seen the Viking ball club fumble and turn the ball over so often during the year, two costly fumbles so far today. Third and two. And it'll be Dorsett. And it just depends as he runs into a gang it did not appear from the first look that he got the first down. The Vikings do it. You get stubborn, damn it. They gave Poten 275 yards in their game, and they only scored, gave up 10 points. They give you a lot of yardage on the ground, but when it gets down there in the nitpicking time, they get tough. One thing about the Vikings, if they had really been discouraged, they'd never have made it this far. Watch it again here. Newhouse, number 45. Sally holding his block all right. The Vikings not allowing them the big play there. Let's see what they do on the fourth down. Fourth down, Manfred Moore going deep, flanked by Bob Grimm on his right and Joe Blayhack on his left, number 21. And Danny White will be punting. He's averaged 39.6 yards a punt. From his own 45, he tries to kick it out of bounds. Instead, it is snared on a fair catch by Manfred Moore on his own 11-yard line. And so the Vikings, for the first time, do not have good field position. That's the one thing they've had. That was a 35-yard punt. Say we got a great night tonight. Be sure to watch for 60 minutes at 8.30, 7.30 Central and Mountain, and it's regular time, 7 o'clock Pacific. Then be in Mel's Diner when George Burns drops in to stir things up on Alice. And wrapping up tonight's entertainment, another great Carol Burnett show, guest star Steve Lawrence. George Burns is too old to stir up anything, Bill. First and ten. From the Minnesota 12, and Foreman wrapped up just as he got to the line of scrimmage. Randy White, among others, plugging it up. Boy, well, he is the player that's coming on, replacing Bob Lilly in there. There's big shoes to fill, but brother, if there's a guy that can do it, he is. Gracious me. Randy White, out of Maryland. He's going to be a great football player. Not as big as Lilly, but every bit as quick, perhaps even stronger. So they picked up one on that play. As we look at Ron Yeri trying to find out where Ed Jones is coming from. Second and nine, Sammy White in motion to the left. And Chuck Foreman gets across the 15 to the 17. Bob Brunig had a big shot and brought him down, number 53. Brunig has done a good job inheriting a great role played by Leroy Jordan. Leroy played it for so long so well, but it takes a while to play this Dallas defense, particularly in the middle. Bruni can get better and better. He's probably the weakest linebacker. That's not saying he's weak, though. It'll be a second, and now third and five from the 17-yard line. Sammy White goes left. Ahmad Rashad right, and the backs is split. We'll see if Lee passes now. Nope, it's Foreman trying to get around Jones, but that was such a big trip that he was caught from behind. And it was Bruni who got him again as he tried to go around too tall. Ed Jones is playing like gangbusters. I'm telling you, he's... Watch him, man. He strings it out this time. Playing off the block of Ron Yeri. Watch this now. Just exactly the way. He's controlled the area all together. Just strings it out. The suit, he'll be in. Running. So the quarter ends, and Dallas, as they were with less than two into it, leading 6-0. What's the quickest way to trim a door? Stanley Surfform. What's the easiest way to shape a tile? Stanley Surfform. What's the best way to smooth body filler? Stanley Surfform. Stanley Surfform tools have preset replaceable blades that won't clog and don't need sharpening or adjusting. Surfform tools trim or shape just about anything. <laughs> What's the best way to give an elephant a pedicure? Stanley Surfform. From Stanley, the do-it-yourself company. <laughs> Hi, I can give you over a hundred reasons why the good taste of beer comes in a bottle.
You get the idea. Now get the good taste of beer. It comes in a bottle. Uh, sir, uh, excuse me. Uh, you just bought a new maintenance-free Firestone Forever battery. How come? Uh, well, the warranty. <laughs> you see, if this battery ever fails to hold a charge for the original owner, uh, that's me, <laughs> in the car in which it was originally installed, right here, Firestone will replace it free with proof of purchase, provided it's not merely discharged or uh, damaged due to accident or abuse. Oh, and uh, I don't even have to put in water. <laughs> that answer your question? Uh, yes, it sure does. The Forever battery, now maintenance-free. Minnesota, as we start the second quarter, unable to move the ball. And so on a fourth and four, Neil Clabo will have to punt it out from his own five-yard line. Butch Johnson all alone on the Cowboy 40. And Butch comes to meet it head on at midfield to the 45, and down he goes, Matt Blair, bringing him down immediately. So Butch Johnson, who, by the way, his real name is Michael. That ought to get some airing. And Butch Johnson brings the return back, and Dallas will take over a four-yard return on a 32-yard punt. Six to nothing, Dallas. A Robert Miller fumble recovered by Harvey Martin. A 32-yard touchdown pass. Roger Staubach to Golden Richards. First and ten from the 46 of Minnesota. Dorset and Newhouse. Slot left. And in motion goes Newhouse. Pitch back to Dorset. The first man to come up and slow him down was Nate Wright. He tried to jitterbug around Nate, and that took up too much time. Meanwhile, a difference of opinion down below. A problem of some kind down below. And there it is. A blanket, evidently, and inadvertently catching on fire. The person. And at first they told us a blanket. My goodness. It's a man in there. Anything can happen in Texas. Woo! Well, we pray he's on. That's Drew Pearson in motion to the left. Staubach giving to Dorset. He has Donovan putting a block on Nate Wright, but he couldn't do it. And Rafferty finally pushing Nate around a little, and Nate still able to slow him down and jam it up. Number 43 from Minnesota, Nate Wright. Ruining that play for the Dallas Cowboys. Ball on the Minnesota 44-yard line. Minnesota. The Cowboys got an early score, and they're holding it. The Vikings should be a tired team, and that's what Bud Grant indicated at the press conference. They've had four different practice fields in the last four days. In the last seven games of the season, they've been in six different seasons. They're a weary team. They're going to give you a performance. Out of the shotgun goes Staubach, third and seven. Roger cranking up and going down the right side off the hand of Nate Wright, and it was intended for Drew Pearson. The same area they slipped a little while ago. It might be some, some wet turf down there somehow. So Drew Pearson going off, as are the offensive line of the Cowboys, and the special teams come in for Minnesota. Now Manfred Moore and Bob Grimm go back, along with Joe Blaha and Danny White. Will be punting for the Cowboys. Just the start of the second quarter with Dallas leading Minnesota six to nothing. Mark Washington and Aaron Kyle are the two men to get down. Look out. Look out. Danny White is running to the 35 30 out of bounds, and it is first down Dallas as Danny White runs for the first down out of punt formation. That's something you don't expect to have happen in a championship game to the Minnesota Vikings It at is all. the first time it has happened this year. And that's preconceived. They knew what they were doing that time. You see the convoy waiting for him. Danny White, backup quarterback to Roger Stahlback, a punter, but he's an all-around athlete, a good athlete. So Danny White runs the ball out of bounds inside the 30 to the 29-yard line of Minnesota, first and 10. Drew Pearson on a wing right, along with Jay Saldy, so two tight ends in there as Pearson goes in motion. And it's Dorsett, big hole! And dragged down by Prouse at the last moment or he's away. Boy, just like Tom Landry drew it up in the playbook. Tom Rafferty, 64, John Fitzgerald, 
62 opening big holes that time good block by Newhouse as you see right there there's a block by Rafferty give him a just a piece of daylight before he's brought down by Paul Krause there take a look at it now again that's picture book there riding Sutherland out there and cutting back against the grain there's Rafferty's block there there's the good tackle there the saving tackle by Paul Krause first and ten from the 16 yard line of Minnesota and here goes Robert Newhouse Rafferty trying to lead the way for him and he actually ran up Rafferty's back and then spun off to the left. Newhouse having his best season I guess since his sophomore season. Well you might take a moment or two out from this ball game and your prayers would certainly be appreciated for that poor soul being taken out. The gentleman who one way or another was on fire as you saw. In the world could something like that happen. Man? And pray for his welfare. Second and seven from the 13. Second man is Dorsett, and he's across the 10. Up the middle center, John Fitzgerald tried to open up the hole for him. Ralph Neely, who will retire at the end of the year after 13 years as we look at Tom Landry. Neely has an old horseshoe nailed atop his locker, and although there will not be much of a ceremony, we understand that when he retires, the horseshoe will go down and he will give it to John Fitzgerald, the Dallas Center, and another tradition is alive in Dallas. Third and four from the 10. Staubach going high down the middle, flag on the play. He had both Dorsett and Dupre down there, and it might be against Krause. It will we'll be against Krause. He hooked him and almost tackled him that time. He had his just completely looked like he was trying to tackle him around the waist that time. So the veteran, Paul Kraus, 14 years. Guilty, and we can take a look at it. Oh, Kraus, who's tied in with now with 79 career interceptions. That time was beaten. We have Roger a holding defense. Look at the time he has First to throw off. there. Good passing lane right there. He didn't get to see it. Dupree is just so big and so physical. Last week, he outmuscled a bear receiver for a touchdown. So it'll be first and goal from the five. And the Cowboys leading six to nothing. Scored early in the first quarter and with 11.45 in the second quarter, try to do it again. Jay Saldi along with Dupre now. Two tight ends are in there. Pearson on a wing left. And it'll be Robert Newhouse. And Newhouse goes barreling across. And the Cowboys have done the one thing that Minnesota feared. They have gotten out in front. And it seems almost impossible that Minnesota can come back with Rafferty and Donovan looking for the St. Patrick's Day Parade open up the hole. From behind, we'll see the big blocks there. Pat Donovan and Rafferty, probably the two best linemen in the Dallas team. Look at the determination of Newhouse. He wants in that colored grass there, brother. So the key, of course, was that run by Danny White out of punt formation. Now Herrera trying to get it up and through and does. And the Dallas Cowboys leading the Minnesota Vikings 13 to nothing. We have 11 minutes and 41 seconds left to go in the second quarter here at Texas Stadium in Irving. But Billy Joe, you are dressed for a Del Rio dog fight. You sure look better in Hager slacks. Or a Hager sport coat and slacks. Even a Hager vested suit. A variety of outfits you don't have to be rich to afford. Oh, Billy Joe, you look like a million dollars. Make that too. Billy Hager, Joe. <laughs> because looking good makes you feel good. Energy for a stronger America. Excuse me, Mr. Johnson. Yeah? Do you know you're one of America's most valuable energy sources? I am? That installation you're installing isn't only going to save you a lot of money. Yeah? It's going to help our country save energy. So? So thank you. You're welcome. By saving energy, you're helping hold down foreign imports, while companies like Exxon develop other energy sources like coal, nuclear fuel, and solar power. Energy for a strong America. Robert Newhouse catching his breath after a five-yard plunge for a touchdown. The Dallas Cowboys leading 13 to nothing. 
Efren Herrera will be kicking off. Manfred Moore is deep. And the key play, Danny White running out of punt formation to pick up a first down inside the Minnesota 30. That kept the drive alive. And it'll be handled by Sammy White. And White still going to the 40, to the 45 before he is dragged down. Huther and Brown making the tackle. So Tom Landry has seen his Cowboys get out in front, 13 to nothing. And on the message board, the Cowboys and Vikings and all Americans wishing a very happy new year to Senator Hubert Humphrey. Vikings again with excellent field position. It's almost imperative they put something on the board now and get back in the ball game. It was a fine return, 37 yards by Sammy White. First and 10 from the 48. White goes right, Ahmad Rashad left. Play action fake to Miller who stays in the block. And Lee going high and deep for Sammy White. No good, a flag on the play. Charlie Waters and Benny Barnes evidently interfering with Sammy White inside the 10 yard line. If there's any question as to how strong Bobby uh, Lee's arm is, look at it right here. Not only did he throw it a long way, I think he was looking for somebody on the left side. He throws it up there so tremendously high. Look at it, he didn't come into the picture yet. Like he threw it from the top of the stadium. And you could see clearly see the interference there on water. Sammy but, White had to wait for the ball, and by that time they caught up to him and bumped him. That is the first penalty against Dallas. There has been only one penalty against the Vikes. So remember, the Dallas Cowboys had it first and goal from the five and punched it over. Now it's first and goal from the eight for Minnesota. That's a 44 yard gain on that interference. White goes left, Rashad right. And Bob Lee trying to get the Vikings back in the game. Another fumble, but Foreman recovered it. And he just did get it back because Jethro Pugh just missed scooping it up. No turnovers last week at all. We'll see the ball pop loose here, I believe. A poor exchange of center. He almost lost it there. That's what the problem was. Lee never got control of it, trying to hand it to Foreman. Foreman Bounced very right by it Jethro up. Pugh up into Chuck's lap that time, or they turn it over again. That's a little late for that now. It is second and goal from the seven. Foreman. Inside the five. It's hard to believe they could not have a turnover in the rain and mud and then handle the ball so loosely here today unless there's some kind of a lack of concentration. That's what it has to be. And a weary team will make mistakes like that. And they obviously are tired. Last week, of course, they ran so well to the left side off the blocks of Goodrum and Steve Riley. They're doing the same thing today. Who are you going to give it to? But a guy, look at the determination in Chuck Foreman. You've got to get both these legs wrapped up before he's going to stop on you. Third and goal from the four. White and Rashad are left. Play action fake to Foreman. Lee under a rush by Randy White. Whoa. And White decks him at the 16-yard line. They lose 12 yards on the play. It was a play action fake that time, and I didn't quite understand what for. I don't believe anybody was fooled. That's Bob Lee. I don't understand why the Randy White just took a strong inside rush that time. Oh, he's an athlete, and he's going to get better and better and better. By the way, the Cowboys led the conference with 53 sacks this year. So we'll have a field goal attempt by Fred Cox. They'll spot it at the 22, a 32-yard effort by Cox. It is good. Hello, boy. Fred, Fred Cox who will retire at the end of the year and is the second greatest scorer in history behind George Blanda, gets Minnesota on the board with 9.57 to the half, 13-3 Dallas. America's best-selling new car in history, the new Ford Fairmont. What's behind Fairmont's success? Fairmont's roominess, more room for the money than any other car. Fairmont's mileage, highest EPA mileage rating of any midsize car. Fairmont's price, lowest sticker price of any midsize car. Test drive America's best-selling new car ever at your Ford dealer, where the better ideas keep coming. A year ago, I reported on the Bell Systems' commitment to solving business problems. 
We now have teams of problem solvers for every industry symbolized here. Transportation, retailing, finance, healthcare, education, and many more, for which we've designed communication systems to answer business problems. We're not just designing a symbol for your industry. We're redesigning the Bell Systems marketing approach to serve your needs. George Burns! It's Burns and Alice. Tonight at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central and Mountain, 8 Pacific. Four plays, 38 yards, resulting in a 32-yard field goal by Fred Cox. The sack by Randy White took all the air out of a possible touchdown balloon. And now Fred Cox starts it and squirts one low on the ground. Picked up there by Larry Brinson. He's to the 30 and goes underneath Nate Allen at the 31-yard line in a pretty good slide. Say, so friends, we're going to be televising the final rounds of the Grand Prix Masters from Madison Square Garden in New York. The field of eight headed by Guillermo Vilas, Jimmy Connors, and Bjorn Borg. Field of eight chosen based on a year-long point system that included 76 major tournaments throughout the world, including Wimbledon and the United States Open. Competing for a $100,000 first prize Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, Sunday at 4. Here comes Dorsett. And Fred McNeil hit him at the ankles. Flag on the play. McNeil, number 54. Trying to stop Dorsett, and it'll be a holding call against Dallas. Thirteen to three in favor of the Cowboys. Boy, in these championship games, you just can't make mistakes. You think about that now, though. On the punt to uh, Danny White, we have holding number sixty-four, offense. The fumble sets up Dallas's first score, and then a fake punt sets up a second. You just can't afford any mistakes in these games. There's a lot at stake as the ball is put on the Dallas 22. First and 20. And that's Newhouse in motion. And there goes Dorsett. However, Fred McNeil as he fumbles, but Dallas recovers. Fred McNeil did a good job of taking the block by Fitzgerald and Rafferty. He was able to tie them up, and on the fumble, Minnesota unable to come up with it. Jim Marshall, number 70, takes a strong inside rush. You see him there. They've got him. That's exactly what they wanted to do. they got Rafferty pulling right here. Dorsett, there's where you see he's a rookie. He went too far outside. The hole was there. And then he fumbled on in addition to that before it was recovered by John Fitzgerald. Second and 18 for the Cowboys, leading 13-3. Butch Johnson is wide left. Drew Pearson wide right, and Staubach in a run. And they try to make a sandwich of him. McNeil was the first man to hit him. But a cowboy getting up pretty slow, too, Ben. That's Dorsett again. Dorsett is limping on that play. There he goes. They told him they're going to limp, limp on the field, not off. Hey. Roger Stallback, probably the most effective thing he does. He only does it three or four times a game, but how many first downs has he picked up running with a football? That's that added dimension. And just think, it wasn't that many years ago they said the quarterback that runs the ball can't play very long. Well, they load up the shotgun, third and 13 from the 29. Preston Pearson staying in to block. Stallback with a plenty of time, still looking. Jim Marshall can't get him. So now he unloads and completes it to Golden Richards, and they gang tackle him out of bounds. Jim Marshall had Staubach in the backfield, and Roger just did get away with checking the time to see how long he had, almost 4.5 seconds, and we'll add to that for a total of almost 10 seconds for Roger Staubach before he threw the ball. 10 seconds. Yes, sir. And not, didn't find anybody open. Tony Hill was about 30 yards behind anybody, but Roger couldn't have got it there with a cannon. Virtually no pass rush. The Vikings have been trouble with that all year. Outside of Eller, they really haven't had a first-rate pass rusher. Alan Page is going to have to come alive. Well, Danny White figures to punt it this time, and he does. And it's Manfred Moore backtracking to his own 24. End of story. Fish. Jay Saldy hit him first, number 87. And there's Saldy just now getting up. Who oh, did he hit him? 
He's been a valuable player to the Cowboy team, brother. He's paid a price for it, however. You usually do when you come down there in a band like that. You want to start something? <laughs> you want to start something? <laughs> you want to start something? Start using Rayovac alkaline energy cells, the finest battery Rayovac makes. No ordinary battery can last as long as our alkaline energy cell. In fact, one Rayovac alkaline can last up to eight times longer than an ordinary battery. So if you want to start something, start using Rayovac alkaline. Get something started with Rayovac. What happens to the money you put in your full service bank? Well, some of it is helping a citizens group restore this decaying neighborhood. One of the citizens is Lynn Dunsavage. Ed, when our bank committed a million dollars in loans to save these fine old homes, people started making repairs. New people moved in. You can see the results, Ed. Quite a story. But that's full-service banking, helping people change things for the better. In fact, no financial institution can help you and your community more than a full-service bank. Tony Dorsett, four yards a carry, limped off the field. He has had three pretty good shots so far in this game, but he just nodded as if to say, yes, I'm okay. Meanwhile, Jay Saldy, who made that tackle, is still down, number 87. We might take another look as Manfred Moore is trying to get out of the way. Saldy hit him on the left ankle, and then the rest of the Cowboys came in, so Saldy took the beating since he was the bottom man. By the way, we have a moment to tell you, and I'm sure you are concerned, the gentleman we saw literally in flames and the flames were smothered and he was taken out of the stadium. The preliminary report is he is at the hospital. Oh, yeah. He is coherent. He is not in too much pain. Evidently he was dressed something like a snowman and an unofficial report said a cigarette ash evidently set fire to his costume. So we pray for his safety. Back to Jay Salter. That might be a bigger injury than you'd know. He's very instrumental in some of the Dallas formations. They use him quite a bit when they use their double tight end situation, not just on short yardage plays. He's an offensive weapon for them. Looked like his right knee that was banged up on it. First and ten from the 23 for the Vikings. Chuck Foreman gets across the 25, but there's a flag on the play. The legal motion going against Minnesota to jam up the work. This has been basically a penalty free first half. However, suddenly now the flags are starting to drop. Illegal motion, number 44, offense. So Chuck Foreman in motion as we look at Jay Saldy in that right knee bothering him. So we'll see if 87 can get back into this one. So the Vikings have it on their own 18, first and 15. Fake to Robert Miller and a pass to Foreman coming out of the backfield, gets across the 25 and is taken down there. So he still had plenty of yardage to go before a first down. Hitting him was D.D. Lewis. Ben, I think I'm right in this. In the three games that Bob Lee's been quarterbacking the Vikings, I think he's only completed two passes to Chuck Foreman. He likes to go upfield with his wide receivers a whole lot more than, say, Fran Tarkington would if he'd be in the game. Yes, the second reception was by Foreman in the mud in Los Angeles prior to today. So it's second and six in the 27. There goes Robert Miller with Foreman trying to block. Henderson hit him and slowed him up. And that's all the Cowboys need is for somebody to slow up a runner. And Charlie Waters, along with Randy White, over to bring him down. Miller, a pretty good-looking ball player, had seen very limited playing time this year until McClanahan had the knee surgery about a week or so ago. Runs with a great deal of authority. Look at this. Good amount of determination. I like him. Good pass receiver, too. Probably better receiver than McClanahan. So Bob Lee trying to move the Vikes. A third down situation on his own 29 as Tom Landry looks on. Third and four. Foreman. And he needed a lot of effort to get that far because it appeared as if he was going to be stopped at the 30. 
And he fought his way out to get a first down. So mark that one in tribute to Chuck Foreman. And the great ball carrier, somehow, some way, they find a way. Chuck Foreman's one of those guys. He just rolls when he's hit, knows where the first down markers are. Watch him this time as he rolls off to the side there. He's a spinner, all right. Second effort, got it. Foreman, of course, three consecutive 1,000 yard years as we look at a bad right knee of Jay Salty. First and ten Vikings. Lee looking right, telling his man to go deeper. His man is Sammy White, and he just went out of bounds in pursuit of the ball. A good idea that time. That little sideline and go. Cliff Harris was there in the coverage, though. There's a guy that can really hurt you right there. The balls he does catch is he'll get some yardage out of them and a lot of touchdowns. Nine to be exact this year. So Bob Lee. And of course, all you have to do is look around here and realize it's cowboy country. They refer to the defense now as Doomsday Junior. Second and ten from the 34. 13 to three Cowboys. 508 to the half. Chuck Foreman going outside a Miller block, but it's banged up there as he got across the 35. He bobbled the ball, but evidently recovered it. D.D. Lewis. Thought he had it and threw it high in the air. D.D. Lewis came up with the football, and D.D. was double dangerous, but slung it out of here. Watch D.D. Lewis play off the block. Last week, he had an interception and a fumble recovery. He's been a good, steady performer for the Cowboys. You don't hear as much about him. But you see how he strung it out that time. The ball did come loose. Harvey Martin holding on to his hips as the ball went flying, and Bud Grant Wondering about the thing that has haunted Minnesota all year, turnovers, and they are sure playing fast and loose with the leather in this first half. Third and seven from the 37. Lee under a rush, but gets it away and completes it to Ahmad Rashad, and Mark Washington takes him out of bounds as they pick up the first down at the 47-yard line. Rashad, the leading receiver in the National Football Conference this year with 51 catches, had two last week, was the only wide receiver for the Vikings to make a reception last week. More of the short range, only averaging about 12 yards. He's got better speed than that. He's been their control receiver for the Vikings. The first Minnesota fumble has been the most damaging, that by Robert Miller. And of course, that really led to the first Dallas touchdown. So it's a little closer than that 13 3 score would indicate. Lee trying to pick up another if he can. Fakes once, slings it, and completes it to the tight end, Stu Voigt. He's inside the 35 yard line of Dallas brought down by Cliff Harris but Stu Voigt the tight end making the reception. You had to wonder how long it was going to be before he went to Stu Voigt. Bob Lee is going to get a lot of double coverage on Sammy White and Ahmad Rashad. They're going to double both sides. He's got to go to that middle area sometime. That time you saw him do it. Stu Voigt a good dependable receiver if nothing more. So he got it to the Dallas 34 yard line first and 10 Minnesota. They started on their own 23. Sammy White wide left. Ahmad Rashad wide right. Foreman the deep man in the eye. Both acts go out and Lee down the left side. A diving catch and a good catch by Sammy White. First down at the 19. Sammy White making a marvelous diving catch. Sammy White with a big inside move this time. Watch him as he comes in toward the post and then back outside. It was a little inside move right there. He gets Kyle turned all the way around at time. Look at the reception here. And yes, he was in bounds. Tried. Look at it again. Bob Lee with excellent pass protection that time. Drifting in there, finding his passing lane. See those hips hit? Perfectly legitimate reception. First and ten from the Cowboy 19-yard line. Sammy White on the right side and Lee faking to Foreman. Throwing it away. Sammy White covered by Barnes along with Charlie Waters. So he just threw it out of bounds. That stops it with 323 to the half. Second and 10 on the 19. And you look at Bob Lee's numbers. Look how long his arms are, Bill. When he puts them down, they hang down about his knees. Bob Lee at one time played City College of San Francisco. Another member of that backfield was O.J. Simpson. He eventually went to the College of Pacific. So it's second and ten from the 19. Slot left, White inside Rashad. 
Bob Tucker is the tight end on the right side. And it's a draw to Foreman. And is that eaten up? Cliff Harris and Bob Brunig played that as if they had the Minnesota playbook behind the line of scrimmage. I love to watch Cliff Harris play. He's just about as reckless as anybody you want to see. And so many times when they use that safety blitz, you see him on the left there coming in on the blitz. They'll blitz that middle linebacker, too. Both of them got in on the action that time. They just guessed right that time. So it's a third down and a long 11 for Bob Lee and the Vikings. 2.50 to the half. 13 to 3 Dallas. Grimm is wide left with White in the slot. Rashad is wide right. Lee gets by. Two ball. Fumble. The ball is still loose. It was too tall Jones applying some pressure and it would appear as if Charles Goodrum number 68 fell on the ball for Minnesota at the 20 yard line and they're still having trouble holding on to the football. I can't help but believe that, that was a preconceived play. I think the quarterback draw was on that time. And Bob Lee although he doesn't run very often fully intended to run with that. But he's been in the red he carried 12 times for a minus eight yards so you didn't figure to see him run much. They will spot the ball at the 27 yard line for Fred Cox. So he's faced with a 37 yard field goal kick when we come back to it. Time out on the field with two minutes left to go to the half. The Dallas Cowboys leading 13 to 3. Well, let me tell you something. I've eaten the dust of many a rodeo and I build up some kind of a thirst. That's why I drank light beer from Miller. It has a third less calories than the regular beers, and it tastes real good. Light says giddy up to all that flavor, and woe to being filled up. And that ain't no book. What? <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. What are more people using to help their cars last? Quaker State Motor Oil. Shoot, <laughs> Quaker State. Hey, Quaker State. Quaker State. What are more people using to help them avoid expensive engine repairs? Quaker State. Quaker State. What else? Quaker State. Quaker State. Quaker State helps cars last. Maybe that's why Quaker State's the best-selling motor oil in America. Fred Cox got Minnesota on the scoreboard, kicking a 32-yard field goal. And just before the two-minute warning, he was going to try another. So on a fourth and 11, Fred Cox will try his second. From the Dallas bench, Jay Saldy has a sprained knee, unsure if he'll return. Tony Dorsett, a bruised heel. He will be back. Down at the 37, Cox gets it up, and it's good. And Fred Cox who at one stage of his career kicked a field goal in 31 consecutive games, has kicked two today, and it has narrows it now to the Cowboys 13 and the Vikings 6. Fred Cox, a doctor of chiropractics, and he will go back to that career once he hangs up his bike. Ah, oh, you're a doll. A Charlie Waters doll. Boy, he's popular down here. They like it. So you look at two things, the fumble by Miller, the recovery by Harvey Martin that led to the 32-yard touchdown pass to Golden Richards, and Danny White running out of punt formation for a first down inside the Minnesota 30. Those are the two big plays that define the difference 13 to 6. No, Fred Cox hasn't been having that good a year kicking the ball, but if it comes down to a field goal in the closing minutes, I know of no one I'd rather have kick it than Fred Cox. Cox was 8 for 17 during the regular year. And he has inspired Minnesota that they are anything but out of the game. They spotted the Cowboys the touchdowns, but he has kept them in it. 13-6 and Fred kicking off. And again, a knuckleball down the left side. And once more, picked up by Larry Brinson. And Brinson can't get underway as he goes smothered to the ground at the 25-yard line. So the Cowboys will put it in play. 
Say a reminder, Challenge of the Sexes returns Sunday, January 8th at 1 p.m. Eastern. Exciting man versus woman. And January 8th show, you'll see tennis, Virginia Wade versus Venus Carolitis. Water ski trick jump, Pam Folsom versus Rusty Stifler. And a motorcycle jump off, Debbie Lawler and Rex Blackwell. Now, I know Phyllis is just as delighted I am that the show is back on. Along with the NBA on CBS, regional games premiering. But play back in, we'll talk about basketball a little later. Robert Newhouse. Jeff Wright got him from behind as he got to the 30-yard line and fell forward. 140 left to the half. 13-6 Dallas. Ball on the Cowboy 31-yard line. Both teams with three timeouts left. A second and five. Staubach getting his time, throws and completes to Drew Pearson, and he goes out of bounds just beyond the 42-yard line, picks up the first down. Year in and year out, one of the most consistent receivers in the National Football League is Drew Pearson. Another thing about Roger Stallback, you can say what you want to about all the great quarterbacks with two minutes remaining, but I think he's as good as anybody moving that ball against the clock. Talking about a clock, if you remember a moment ago, we put a stopwatch on Roger, and on that scrambling play, he had 10.5 seconds before he got rid of the ball. You could read two chapters of War and Peace. First and 10 from the 43. Staubach out of the shotgun. Dorsett staying in, but he doesn't have anybody to block. Now he hits Marshall to keep him away. And the pass released to the tight end, Billy Joe Dupree. And Jeff Wright met him head on along with Jeff Seaman. First down. Oh, he's a big target. Roger Stallback improvising a little bit. All the primary receivers are covered. When, they, when that happens, those receivers are supposed to move around, find the open zones in there. Minnesota primarily a zone team. There you see. Billy Joe Dupree is a big target. Roger goes right through it. Look at this impact here. Big old strong boy. At halftime, Phyllis Brandon Herb will be with us, who'll stay right with us. There's a lot to the story of Dallas versus Minnesota here in Irving, Texas. Phyllis we back have, home. Yes, yeah, sure. She's from Denton, Denton, Texas. Just a ways up the road. I got lost the other night and ended up up there. <laughs> Close to it. Been lost since I've been down here. You got lost, but you're making good time. We have 53 seconds left to go to the half. The ball on the Minnesota 41-yard line, where the Cowboys will put it in play, first and ten. Dallas leading 13 to six, and of course the winner goes to New Orleans for the Super Bowl against Denver. Vikings have been to four Super Bowls. I think uh, Dallas three Super Bowls. Isn't that right? Yeah, and the. Minnesota, of course, 0 for 4. Oh, first and 10. Staubach has 53 seconds, and they load up the shotgun again. Dorsett backs off to block for him, along with Preston Pearson, and a big rush put on by Alan Page, and Page gesturing to Staubach, and Matt Blair comes over to say something to Staubach. Well, we'll wait for the officials' call. Intentionally grounding the football, perhaps. Well, they were trying to hit Tony Dorsett that time, coming a uh, delayed pattern coming out of the backfield. Well, I believe it was. Uh, let's see, Matt Blair had the coverage that time. Didn't fool anybody at all. Roger just took the safe way out. Cost him some yardage that time, though. Well, it comes as no surprise to you that they don't like the call here in Dallas. There's Here's Alan, Alan Page. Page breathing down his neck. Roger said, I better unload my shotgun about right now. He just got it over Matt Blair's head to hit the ground. So that puts it back on the 44-yard line of Dallas. We're at a second and 25. Butch Johnson is wide right. Drew Pearson left. Here comes Matt Blair. But the throw is to Preston Pearson. And he's to the 45, to the 40, to the 30. Wally Hilgenberg brought him down inside the 
the 25 yard line. Dallas asking for timeout. 38 seconds to the half. Preston Pearson, as you all know, one of the better receivers coming out of the backfield in all of football. Roger Stallback reaching in the bag and coming up with a little trick play, the old jump pass. Watch almost all the linemen outrun Preston. This is his last year. Hadn't run for two weeks until yesterday. Hadn't hurt him too awful much. Look at that Dallas precision. When they do execute, they are a thing of beauty. 42 yards. Preston Pearson bumped into Pat Donovan, and that gave Wally Hilgenberg the extra step, and Hilgenberg dragging him down from behind at the Minnesota 24-yard line. With time out, a reminder, the 1978 CBS Sports Spectacular presenting an exciting calendar of outstanding events in January, World Light Heavyweight Championship, defending champion Miguel Cuejo and Mate Parlov. The World Lightweight Championship, Roberto Duran defending his title against Esteban de Jesus and super skates plus the Hollywood stuntmen competition and much more. Be sure to watch the 1978 CBS Sports Spectacular beginning Saturday 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Give my monkey a banana. The Darwin Theory lives in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it do. The Beauty and the Beast. Oh, and they are some lovers too. Dallas, Texas. Yes, sir. First in 10, as the Cowboys have moved it to the Minnesota 24-yard line, 38 seconds to the half. Roger Staubach sends Golden Richards in a slot inside Drew Pearson. He has Dorset on a wing. Preston Pearson and now Dorset come back. Roger looking down the left side and throwing to Richards, no good. Golden Richards had already left the end zone when he made the reception. Down there with him was Nate Wright and Paul Krause. So Richards, who scored a touchdown on a 32-yard pass from Staubach, this time simply ran out of real estate. Let's see if we can see his pattern. It's an in-and-out pattern designed to go right where it was thrown. Roger Staubach could not throw it much better than this. Was there any chance at all of him keeping his feet in the bounds? Let's see. Yes, no. there probably was if he did. Raymond Berry could have. <laughs> Raymond Berry could have. Go second and 10 on the 24. 32 seconds to the half. 13 to 6, Dallas. Pearson and Butch Johnson in a slot left. Dorsett on a wing left. And now he and Pearson come back again to block. Staubach looking left and there's a flag on the play as he throws to Billy Joe Dupre out of his hand and he took a lick from Nate Wright but a flag on the play the flag hit Herbert Scott on the back so I would assume Herbert Scott was guilty of holding once again I'm, I'm inaccurate well we'll see I'm curious to see what this is going to be. It's going to be against Minnesota. Hmm, is it ever? To the 12 yard line. Let's listen. Personal foul, head slapping, number 77, defense. First down. Well, you heard it. The identification would be young Mark Mullaney, who was guilty of the head slap. Seeing more and more playing time in there for Jim Marshall in passing situations. So first and 10 from the 12-yard line, 24 seconds to the half. Pearson and Dorsett, back of Roger Staubach. Roger over the middle to Preston Pearson and he's inside the five yard line. Jeff Seaman and Fred McNeil bring him down. Clock running as you see. And now they call timeout. So let's take another look at that play in slow motion. So many times you've seen Preston Pearson come out of the backfield. Everybody knows they're gonna throw to him but he has a way of getting open. Between the working between the linebackers there's none any better. Look at the linebacker play of Minnesota Vikings. 
two fine linebackers in McNeil. And who did we have in there that time with McNeil? Jeff Seaman. Seaman, yeah. So nine seconds to the half as Tom Landry huddles with his team. Dallas, by taking this timeout, has expended their three. It is 13 to 6, Dallas. Minnesota needed a lift, and the lift they have gotten two field goals from Fred Cox. Cowboys scored on a 32 yard pass to Golden Richards and a five yard run for a touchdown by Robert Newhouse. Should they choose to go for one more play and rather than take the field goal, they can get themselves in some trouble should Roger Stahlbeck be sacked and not come away with nothing at all. Well, they are not going to go for the field goal to listen to the looks of things. Roger, having talked to Tom Landry, Jeff Seaman, meanwhile, came over to talk to Bud Grant. With Wally Hilgenberg and Jim Marshall standing on the side, you see Jeff Seaman in the right-hand corner going back. So he's carrying the defensive story for the Minnesota Vikings. Seaman out of Stanford. Been plagued by injuries all year. Studwell's been playing well, several games I saw he played some ball in there. Studwell, good looking rookie for him. Minnesota, by the way, was third against the pass. So we'll see. Second and two from the four yard line. Roger looking left, hesitate, Thompson throws it over the head of Drew Pearson with Bobby Bryant right there with him. Well, that didn't take long. We got five seconds left. Roger, obviously disappointed at that. What a determined individual he is. Brother. Efren Herrera will be asked to kick the field goal. He kicked three against Chicago for an NFC record, tying Fritch and Knight and David Ray. And Herrera in field goals, 18 for 29. His longest 52 yards. And the kid from Guadalajara kicks it through. So the Cowboys do not walk away empty handed with three seconds to go in the half. Put a little taco sauce on that one. It's Cowboys 16 and the Vikings 6. Somewhere. Efren Herrera out of UCLA. So he has one. Fred Cox has two. And it could very well still come down to a battle of the kicking game. The big thing for Minnesota at this stage, they have to convince themselves that they can hold on to the football because turnovers have been a most important part of this first half. Herrera will be kicking. Manfred Moore is the deep man. Robert Miller is short on his left. Sammy White to his right. And we'll see whether Herrera gives Manfred Moore a chance to return it. 16 to 6 in favor of Dallas here in the first half. And Herrera bangs it up the middle and it's fielded there by Mark Keller. He's to the 40 yard line and down he goes Brown and Hegman along with Aaron Kyle. The three Cowboys will wrestle him down and the half is history. So the Dallas Cowboys leading the Vikings by 10 as they go to the clubhouse. Dallas 16, the Vikings 6. But can't my cold RC. Well, I'm just a rookie ranger, but I know what's right for me. Like a slower pace and breathing space in a nicely cold RC. Me and my RC taste mighty good to me. Cause what's plain old good to other folks ain't good enough for me and my RC. Introducing a new 1978 Ford Renata, the ESS. Can you tell it from this impressive $20,000 Mercedes 280SE? Renata. Mercedes. Renata. Mercedes. Renata. Mercedes. The new Ford Renata ESS. See how close you can come to the look of a $20,000 Mercedes at the price of a Granada. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Tuesday, it's war on Mac. You knock off the horn, we shall. And it's a fight to the finish. Then there's a race driver in Anslow. He's a fast company on fast tracks. I'm not into cars, I'm not into racing, I'm into shorts. One day at a time, following Mac. Tuesday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain.
1978 CBS Sports Spectacular presents an action-packed calendar in January, beginning next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. with the WBC World Light Heavyweight Championship between defending champion Miguel Cuello and Mate Parlo. In subsequent weeks, we'll feature the graceful and exciting Super Skates, plus the Hollywood Stuntmen Competition, and the World Lightweight Championship with Roberto Duran defending his title against Esteban de Jesus. The action-packed 1978 CBS Sports Spectacular begins next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Okay, welcome back to Dallas and Phyllis and Irv. We had a very frightening moment up on television during the first half. That spectator was caught on fire and you saw a perfect shot of it. I have more details. Fortunately, the man is not seriously injured. He is 24-year-old Daniel Yoder. He suffered second-degree burns of the neck and the leg. He is resting comfortably at Parkland Hospital. The man was wearing a costume and apparently someone was sitting behind him with a cigarette and the costume ignited. But again, he is not in serious condition, and Phyllis, that's good news. That is such good news. Bless his heart. We know he's going to be all right. Well, speaking of everything being all right, we hope January 15th, Denver's very happy today. They'll be in New Orleans at the Superdome playing the winner of this NFC Championship. Irv, what are your thoughts about that? Well, of course, Denver has to be excited, and I'm excited for them because they're certainly the Cinderella team in pro football, but we're going to be down there ourselves for a 90-minute pregame show, and I can hardly wait to get down there. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I am, I am sure that everyone in Denver would like to see it one more time. The highlights of their 20-17 to 17 conquest of the Oakland Raiders, who bowed out tremendously. They went down flaming, just like you figured the Raiders would do. It was Craig Morton who was hospitalized for two days. Came in, hit Haven Moses in the first quarter. 74-yard touchdown. Moses caught five passes for 168 yards and two touchdowns. Denver 7, Oakland 3. Stabler going back to Bolitnikoff. Bolitnikoff knocked out of the game with a dislocated shoulder on that hit by Joe Rizzo. Now, was this or was this not a fumble? Lytle coming up over the middle, and the officials ruled that the play was dead. No recovery by McCoy. And then after that, using a rollout, Morton pitching to Keyworth, it was 14-3 in the third quarter. Then it was the fourth quarter. Kenny Stabler trying to rally the champions, wants his tight end, Dave Casper. He's got him for the touchdown. It's 14-10. Still in the fourth quarter, Stabler only threw one interception, but it was costly. Bob Swenson picked that pass off, which was intended for Casper, brought down at the 18-yard line. Now watch Morton. He's going to find Haven Moses again for his second touchdown. This put the Broncos on top by 10. They missed the extra point, and that left the door ajar. Stabler again. He was 17 of 35, 215 yards. Goes to Casper for the second touchdown. It was 2017. Now third, two and a half to go, less than a minute, and it is Otis Armstrong killing the clock. And the final score again is 20 to 17. The Denver Broncos are going to the Super Bowl against the winner of this game against Minnesota and Dallas. And you know, Phyllis and Irv, time flies so quickly for all of us here at CBS. 1977 was an absolutely memorable year. I can remember, for example, Bill Walton and Julius Irving. We'd like to pay tribute to all the stars of last year. Carly Simon singing her famous song, Nobody Does It Better. Okay, Phyllis, thank you very much. We're still a long way away from game time here. We're waiting for Dallas and Minnesota for their rematch of that unforgettable playoff game of a couple of years ago. I'm trying, Mr. Sullivan. And if uh, Tom Brookshire gets through with the field, he'll be joining me on the broadcast. I can't believe he did that. Back to you, Phyllis.
Philadelphia with possession. They had their chances that time. Maurice Lucas, I don't know where he's playing right now. If they take the ball in bounds, George McGinnis is wide open. I don't know what he's doing. Here's McGinnis. Lucas comes out. McGinnis for the tie. It's off. Oh, he's there. complimented the athletes going into this piece and would certainly like to compliment all the technicians around this country that have made such marvelous shows here on CBS Sports. We have two very special guests today at halftime. You may recognize them. They'll be with us tomorrow on the Cotton Bowl game right here on CBS. Coaches Dan Devine and Coach Fred Aker of the Texas Longhorns and the Fighting Irish. Gentlemen, it's great to have you here. We're going to ask you some in-depth questions about your teams tomorrow, so get ready, Brent and Irv, and we'll be back after these messages from your local stations. How can they get Charles to give up the French horn? Hawkeye and BJ come up with an ingenious scheme on MASH, Tuesday on CBS. McDonald's presents the official NFL history of the Super Bowl, an exciting three-volume series. Volume one takes an in-depth look at Super Bowl games one through four, and you can get volume one now at participating McDonald's. The official NFL history of the Super Bowl. Collect all three Super Volumes. Volume one plus coupons worth $1.25. Yours with purchase of either quarter pounder sandwich and a medium or large Coca-Cola through January 1st. Every time somebody asks if Con Edison's meters are accurate, it gets to me. You're darn right they're accurate. I know, because it's my job to make sure. First off, they're manufactured to the strictest standards. Then we test them before they're installed. That's what I'm doing now. And we make spot tests to make sure they stay accurate. So accurate, you can set your watch by them. Right for our pamphlets. At Con Edison, we're working harder to serve you better. Happy New Year from Channel 2. These coaches are so calm, and tomorrow they're going to play for a national championship on CBS at 2 p.m. Eastern time. 
Dan Devine, I happen to think you had the Green Bay Packers in a playoff game. I believe it was on a Saturday against Washington. Tomorrow you've got Freddie Akers in the Cotton Bowl. What's the difference in pressure in approaching a playoff game in the NFL and a bowl game with a college team? Well, Brent, there really isn't a great deal of difference. I think the emotions in the locker room uh, are very, very similar. Certainly the emotions of the coaches are the same. I think the players are more mature naturally in professional football, but as far as just before the ball game is concerned, I don't think you'd really know any difference. Driving up here today, uh, Fred and I came together, and we were very calm, and we'll be a little different tomorrow. <laughs> don't take it. I saw you give that hook em horn sign before we came on the air. You know, you're in a rebuilding year this year, yet you had the Heisman Trophy winner, the Outland Trophy winner, and you're sitting on top of the country right now with the number one ranking. You have to be satisfied with your ball club. Were you surprised with your team's progress? Well, yes, we, we were surprised. We had no way of knowing that, that we would be where we are today. And we did start the season feeling we had to rebuild. We've had a lot of good things happen to us. And uh, one of the things we've had happen is we've had a relatively injury-free year. And that makes a big difference in football at any level, as you know. It's a big difference, Coach Akers. I wanted to ask Coach Devine something. I ran into Ken McAfee the other night at dinner, and I had interviewed he and Ross Browner on a, this very show. He was flying higher than a kite, so confident. The rest of the team feel that way? Well, I think we have a football team that likes to reach a, an emotional peak. It certainly, fellas, can be reached too early. When you come to the site of a bowl game early like we did, I think that's your chief danger. But we've, I believe, attacked it quite intelligently, or hopefully we've attacked it intelligently. And I think we're going to be at a peak to play Texas because they are national champs. They are undefeated. They deserve uh, to be number one. I shouldn't say they are national champs. I guess I'm a little premature there. <laughs> but they certainly uh, deserve to be number one, and it's going to take a great effort on our part to hold up our end, and I think it's going to be a tremendous football game. I really do. Fred, how's your field goal kicker, Erksleben? Is he healthy? Will uh, he be ready to punt and kick field goals for you? Yes, Russell is healthy, and thank goodness he's he's quite a football player and quite a big part of our football team. And we've missed him for the last two or three ball games. And he is healthy and ready to go. You'll see him handling all our kicking. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> that gives him an incredible weapon at midfield, doesn't it, Dan? I think it turns the, uh, the game around a little bit when you have somebody that, when you get to the 50-yard line, can conceivably score. I don't hope uh, that they can score every time, Fred, when, you, when you're on the 50 with a 67-yard field goal, but it, we have a good field goal kicker in Dave Reed. He doesn't kick quite that distance, but it, all facets of the game are going to be seen tomorrow. The Heisman Trophy winner was rushed for 1,700 yards. 1,000 of that yards is after he's been hit. Two great field goal kickers, great defensive plays by both players on both teams, two academic uh, institutions of sound stature. They have tremendous alumni, fans, student bodies. One of the all-time good games, hopefully, uh, will be shown here. And it will start at 2 o'clock Eastern time on CBS, the Cotton Bowl showdown, unbeaten Texas and once-beaten Notre Dame. What a game that is going to be. Dan and Fred can now take a look at these highlights from the first half of Dallas and Minnesota. They picked out just a couple of players that they'd like to have on the field down there tomorrow. I think Dan wouldn't mind having Tony Dorsett come out of the backfield. At any rate, here was the turnover early that gave the Cowboys a shot. And Irv, did they ever get Golden Richards wide open for this touchdown? Really a great play, Brent. It's a fake screen. Richards open in the corner. Touchdown. Now, here is the fake punt. I can remember Danny White against St. Louis hitting them with a pass off of this formation down here in a big Thanksgiving game a couple of years ago. He's got the option. He saw the opening. Now, here is Tony Dorsett. You'll see Earl Campbell tomorrow, last year's Heisman Trophy winner today on CBS, down to about the 11-yard line. Then at the goal line, it is Robert Newhouse battling in for the end zone, the unsung hero of that backfield. Here is Lee, who today is playing for Grant, going to Sammy White, and interference is going to be called on Dallas at their eight-yard line. They just simply ran into him down there. Now there is a big sack by Randy White. He dropped Lee for a 10-yard loss, and that forced Minnesota to settle for a field goal. Cox has got it, 13-3. Fred hoping this is not his last game. Lee going to Sammy White this time on the 19. White was shut out in the Los Angeles Ram victory of last Monday night, but a fine catch there. And then it was Fred Cox kicking the 37-yard field goal. It was 13-6. Stavak under pressure, 
got it off to Preston Pearson, the big play man off the bench, the John Havlicek of the National Football League, getting to the Minnesota 24, Efren Herrera kicking a 21-yard field goal, and so that makes it 16-6, to scored again, and we've still got a great big half of football coming up, and Irv, afterwards, we've got a post-game show. Tim Ryan and Gary Bender will be down in the locker room, but it is time to say... Ran, of course, I'm gonna, I've got to go do the Rose Parade, so I'm not going to be here for the post-game, but I have a surprise for you guys. Turn around, the lovely hey, Dallas Cowgirls. I'm here to bring you to greetings. Oh, oh, all right. Greetings. Oh, 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 say hello to Irv Cross, Brady well, Musburger, Dan Devine, think... and Fred Akers. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Degree from TWU, Great. Shannon Baker, a, a student at, at SMU. We've got Cindy Lewis, Gay Terrell. We have Jill Wagner, and Connie has just taken over Brent Musburger's chair. <laughs> they not only are beautiful folks, they have brains. Why, Brent, is the first time he's ever speechless. Let's let's go away, and we'll be back for the second half of the NFL today. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> I have a confession to make. Last year, the abbot asked me to do an impossible job. Copy 500 sets of this manuscript. I did it, but I used the Xerox 9200. Now, to save paper, he wants it copied on both sides, and he wants it fast. This is going to take another miracle. Where do you want it, Brother Dominic? Right here. The Xerox 9400 duplicator with automatic two-sided copying. Will miracles never cease? Is this homeowner's insurance high? I don't know. Think it's too much? How would I know? Compare with Allstate. Compare? compare? Bring in your policy and compare rates. If you have a good deal, we'll tell you. But for many, chances are we've got a better deal. We've got a better deal. Allstate might save you some money, but you'll never know until you bring in your policy and compare. Oh, that's a good deal. <laughs> when you want to save on homeowner's insurance, yeah. <laughs> Allstate wants to help. That's a promise from us, the good hands people. This football trophy is made of coal. It commemorates a team of miners called the Pottsville Maroon. Back then, the ball was fatter, not much different than the helmet, a piece of old leather. You went 60 minutes in a shirt and shoes, anybody's. Today, sleeker football is made for passing, and colorful uniforms cover a lot more protection. Football has come a long way, and it's all here, waiting for you at the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Don't miss it. Hi, this is Pat Summerall. I'm looking at a sample copy of the official Super Bowl XII game program that we'll be using when CBS Television brings you the exclusive coverage of Super Bowl XII on January the 15th from New Orleans. This program will have scouting reports, photos and lineups for both teams, a week-by-week -week review of the entire 77 season, plus a special section featuring the most valuable players from the past 11 Super Bowls. For your souvenir copy, send 250 to Super Bowl XII, Winona, Minnesota, 55987. Allow six weeks for delivery. This is a souvenir that the whole family will enjoy. Hi, well, everybody. Vin Scully along with Alex Hawkins welcoming you back to the second half. The Cowboys leading the Vikings 16 to 6. Fred Cox kicking off to the deep men. Butch Johnson and Larry Brinson. And it'll be Brinson from the 13. Slips and down he goes. Shy of the 25. A fumble. And the indication is that Dallas recovers. And meanwhile, a player hurt. Bruce Huther is down on the 40 yard line. So Huther shaken up. By the way, in seeing Huther down, it reminds us Jay Saldy was in on that kickoff return. So evidently the right knee is not that badly injured that he could not continue. Here are some of the numbers that tell part of the story of the first half. The Minnesota Vikings have had good field position in the first half. Five of six times they've managed to come up with two field goals by Fred Cox. The biggest single gain for Minnesota would be a 44-yard pass interference play that set up Cox's second field goal. There's Bruce Huther shaking his head and hobbling off, and he, that right leg turned into jelly. So Efren Herrera comes out along with Bob Brunig to see if he's okay. So Huther evidently taking a lick, the timeout. 
You know, when you talk about the Dallas Cowboys, you speak of the free agents, and somehow every year they come up with a couple of them. Well, Bruce Hutter is one of them they came up with this year. One of two that made the ball club again this year for the Dallas Cowboys. Fans bundled up. It was 30 degrees when the game started. It might be colder now. Bruce Hutter is a rookie out of New Hampshire. So the Cowboys will put it in play. First and 10 on their own 28 yard line, leading 16 to 6. Butch Johnson in a slot right inside Drew Pearson. Dupre the tight end on the left side. Tony Dorsett slipped and went down on his own. Matt Blair was fighting Butch Johnson at the 35 yard line, and Dorsett slipped and went down. Dorsett, who had a bruised heel as we look at Matt Blair. Blair, Seaman, and McNeil. Trying to hold on with the back four of Eller, Sutherland, Page, and Marshall. And in checking, Mullaney and Marshall, along with Page, Sutherland, and Eller. Drew Pearson, wide right. On a second and one call by Staubach. And he goes to Dorsett following Newhouse. They stack him up, so it's questionable. Dorsett had a bruised heel in the first half. Jeff Seaman coming in and plugging up that middle very well. Watch number 50 coming into your picture. Not a stand off there at the line of scrimmage, but look at that shot there. Jeff Seaman. That was Newhouse trying to block him, but Seaman was too strong. He might have shuddered at impact, but he plugged it. With a ball at the 37 yard line, third and one. Dorsett. They stack him up. It would appear that he got over the pack and then was pushed backwards. We'll let that decision to the referee. Those purple people can get stubborn when they want to. Those third yard, uh, third and short situations, goal line situations, they don't give up much. You think how they're outweighed? Jim Marshall, did, I don't believe he weighs about 225 pounds. He's outweighed, giving up about 30 pounds. Nearly everybody he plays against, but he holds his own. Been a great performer for the Vikings. So we'll see. And there's the story. They need that much. It is fourth down. Tom Landry leading 16 6. Let's take another look from behind the quarterback. Dorsett not having a particularly good day today. He's been troubled with some injuries, I guess. You got to give Jeff Seaman his due, as well as the rest of that defensive front for the Vikings. Well, on a fourth and one. Manfred Moore goes back to his own 20. Remember Danny White burned the Vikings. <coughs> he ran for 14 yards for a first down that set up the second Cowboy touchdown. This time he'll kick it. And Moore on his own 28 yard line. Down he goes at the 30. The first man to hit him was Scott Laidlaw number 35. That slowed him up for Tom Henderson to knock him down. So Minnesota will put the ball in play first and 10 from their own 30. Don't forget the 78 CBS Sports Spectacular presenting an exciting calendar of outstanding events next Saturday the WBC World Light Heavyweight Championship defending champion Miguel Cuello and Mate Parlov. First and 10 from the Viking 30. Foreman with Miller and he tries to get inside Yeri. And the fellow who messed that play up is too tall Jones, number 72. Oh, hadn't he played oh, a ball game today? He fought off Ron Yeri, and that messed it all up. Well, I talked to Cliff Harris about him the other day, and he said that is right now the, currently the best player on the defense for the Dallas Cowboys. He's too tall. Doing a great job of forcing it, playing off a blocker, and letting that pursuit come in. Charlie Waters and Randy White taking advantage of too tall who was handling Ron Yeri. Boy that's a day and a half work for Ron Yeri to try and block too tall Jones second and 11 from the 29 play action fakes and Lee going high down the middle and he's got Sammy White and White's going out of bounds inside the 45 yard line to the 43 yard line at Dallas. Charlie Waters takes him out but Sammy White's in business. Oh yes sir. Beat the double coverage that time. They had him inside and out and he still beat it that time. Sammy White. The deep threat of the Vikings. Watch you run the inside and out pattern. Now you see Aaron Kyle pushing him inside. You should be able to see the safety come into the play right here. Waters I believe. Right there but he beat the coverage. 
you get the feeling and you've had it most of the day Minnesota is OK except for Minnesota mistakes first and ten from the forty three they picked up twenty eight yards on the play Chuck Foreman following Robert Miller to the thirty five and down he goes at the thirty one yard line that time he got by Harvey Martin and Aaron Kyle finally brought him down Martin almost had him behind the line of scrimmage. A lot of people have almost had Chuck Foreman but he just keeps on keeping on watch him break the tackle here at number 79 Harvey Martin. You got plenty look at the strength that guy's good. Dallas finally zoom in on him a little bit there. Foreman Andy White with all that pursuit the speed. First and ten on the Dallas 32 yard line. Sammy Johnson is going to carry and he gets inside the 30. The same Sammy Johnson who scored a touchdown against the Rams in the mud after Foreman was banged up. Yep. Tom Landry, what a career. Overall, he has piloted Dallas to 161 victories, winner of Super Bowl VI. And in the last 12 years, he's gotten the Cowboys 11 times into the playoffs. His, rec his record speaks for itself. What an outstanding person and probably a misunderstood person, too. Just because he's quiet. He's got a great sense of humor and he's a nice man, very direct. Second and eight from the 30. And hold everything. Flags like snowflakes coming down. The illegal procedure against Minnesota. So again, it's the old story. We have met the enemy and they are us. Good point. Minnesota struggling against themselves. They have played Dallas pretty well, but the Vikings are causing themselves more trouble than the Cowboys. Sammy Johnson. Ball start. Foreman comes 78 in. offense. That would be Steve Riley trying to get a jump. They'll spot the ball at the 35, where it is second and 13. Crowd kind of quiet right now, well bundled up. In the modern day picture of the crowd watching themselves on television. Second and 13 from the 35. Foreman inside Yari slowed up and barely got across the 35. Randy White as usual right in the thick of things. And so cohesive that Dallas defense everybody being where they're supposed to be. Tutel not going to let him pick the outside position playing off his block and being in on a tackle. White Martin the whole group. And Foreman limping on that left leg. That's the thing about that flex defense then that the Dallas plays so often. It takes so much time to learn it and so much discipline. Tom Landry exemplifies this discipline on this team. They Third can use 12 from the 34. <laughs> Lee going to the left side over the head of the intended receiver Bob Grimm. Mark Washington over there to defend. And so Lee is bogged down as he misses Grimm. And of course, remember that illegal procedure apparently added some more yardage and took a little steam out of a possible Minnesota drive. Lee throwing the ball a little bit high today. Several times the ball's taken off on him. So fourth down and 12 from the 34. Tony Hill. Tony Hill standing on his own 10 yard line. Neil Claybo punting from the Dallas 45, angling for the corner. And he couldn't do it. So Claybo has kicked 19 inside the 20 this year, but not that time. So the Dallas Cowboys will put it in play. First and 10 from their own 20, 10 minutes and 11 seconds to go in the third. This year, when you step out on the town, don't just drive. Take off in the 1978 Thunderbird with its distinctive look and size, its Thunderbird quality and comfort. And it comes at a down-to-earth price of 5808 with automatic transmission, power steering, power brakes, V8, and more. Flight test the 1978 Thunderbird. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. The All-American Hot Cup. The ever-popular Frankfurter is but one of hundreds of food products provided by Swift Foods. Swift is part of s -Mart, an American family of companies which also provides fertilizers to make more food available. 
energy to keep the wheels turning, and consumer products from Playtex. S-Mart, providing over $5 billion worth of needed products annually for you and your world. The Dallas Cowboys leading 16 to 6, 10 minutes and 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. And tomorrow, the eyes of Texas will be on the Cotton Bowl as well as the rest of the nation. Undefeated Texas, the Irish of Notre Dame at 2 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. It'll be the best of all the bowl games. It should be a whopper. Dorsett, the deep man behind Newhouse, he follows a Newhouse block. And gets across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. Well, he just glides, doesn't he? Another year of experience, and he's going to be something to watch. Not that he's not already. Tony Dorsett. A so picture fluid. of Dorsett last week standing on the sidelines with an ice pack on his right knee. And then earlier in the game, he bruised his heel. Speaking of bruises, Foreman went out with a bruised knee and should be returning. Would you believe this game is in Dallas and not Minnesota when you see that? Second and three. And Dorsett confused, and so the Vikings make Starbuck pay. Tony Dorsett, first of all, was late in the shift and very unsure. And then as he rolled in front of Starbuck, he thought he was going to get the ball. You'll so, watch a young man who is confused. Somehow you get the idea that his mind is drifting a little bit today, yeah. that he's not quite with the with everything. Now he's going to block, then he says, give me the ball. McNeil says, thank you. And then Blair and the rest of the Vikes. So Tony Dorsett. And it can happen, of course, a very complicated offense for Tom Landry. Third and three from the 27. Starbuck going to put it up. Down the middle, and a great catch by Preston Pearson. Nate Allen was there all over him, and somehow Preston Pearson made the reception. Remember, he made that key 32-yard catch. That was a big play that led to Herrera's field goal. I think you summed it up. You said somehow he made the catch. Well, that's somehow happening again and again is the way that you get the Super Bowls, making the play when you have to. Preston Pearson, how important he's been to this Dallas team over the last two years. Well, Nate Allen all over him, but it didn't make any difference. It is 29 degrees here in Irving. First and 10 on the 35. Tony Dorsett, and he runs into a Viking team picture at the 35. Seven minutes, 50 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Cowboys 16, Vikings 6. In the first half, our stats unofficially, not much difference in plays. The Cowboys had the ball 30 plays, the Vikings 29. But the Cowboys forced seven Chicago turnovers last week, and a couple of Viking turnovers were very costly in the first half today. Second and seven from the 38. In motion, Drew Pearson. Play action fake to Dorsett. Staubach down the middle, no good. Drew Pearson had his hands on the ball, couldn't hold it. Chuck Foreman, we saw limping off the field a few moments ago, would appear to be okay as he walks up and down along the Viking bench. The ball on the 38-yard line, where it is third and seven. 61,968 here today to see whether the Cowboys or Minnesota will go to New Orleans to play Denver. Third and seven, out of the shotgun. And Staubach going high and deep. And it was Nate Wright and Paul Krause down there, along with Drew Pearson. Boy, do you remember that same play in 1975 when these two teams met in Bloomington, the last play of the game. That was the man you're looking at, Nate Wright, who was victimized by Drew Pearson for the touchdown in that hallelujah finish. The so-called Hail Mary pass. The Hail Mary pass, that's right. Hallelujah yards, was close. 50-yard pass with 24 seconds left in the game. What a finish that was. <laughs> 
So Danny White will punt from his own 25 yard line and Manfred Moore standing on his 20. Bikes can't get near him. He appeared to hurry it anyway. Manfred Moore is going to have to let it roll and it's inside the 15. Finally picked up by Jay Saldy who felt like he wanted to touch the ball once. He took a pretty good crack on the knee earlier you remember. We have six minutes and 53 seconds left to go in the third quarter. That was a 50 yard punt. It is 16 6 Dallas over Minnesota. Here's to good friends. Tonight well, is kind of special. Tomorrow we go back to civilization. And let's have a last night in the wilderness party. Yeah, yeah. Good idea. I've got just what we need. So tonight. Hey. Brown. You've been hiding that all week. I was waiting for the right moment. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Well, like the song says, here's to good friends. Uh, let it be low and brown. Sir, what's the hurry? Oh, going to rent a car. Oh, well, you don't have to run. Oh, gotta run. Oh, no, if you had an Avis wizard number, you could walk. You could walk. Call toll-free and let our wizard system do the running. Just show a major credit card, license, sign, and get the car. I don't have to run through airports? Not with Avis. I can walk through airports. We try hard with Avis. Avis, we don't know another way. I'm walking through airports. That's great football action. And if you like action, tune in on my show, Barnaby Jones, Thursday nights at 10, 9 Central and Mountain. You are looking at two future patients. You see Ralph Neely, number 73, along with Santa John Fitzgerald. They are each going under the knife for knee operations after the year. For Ralph Neely, it will be his fourth knee operation in his career. Boy, you gotta love it. First and ten from the 13 for Minnesota. And it is Robert Miller. And he barely got to the 10-yard line. And Harvey Martin was the man who met him, and that was the end of the story. Dallas defense playing offense right now. Gonna try to keep him in the hole and get the good field position on the exchange of punts. In the backfield, Chuck Foreman along with Robert Miller. Of course, for the Vikings in the first half, they had good field position five of the six times they got the ball, and yet they could manage only two field goals. Lee throwing to Ahmad Richard, and Aaron Kyle tried to hit him to Lubbock. Good job! Oh, they look inspired. That Dallas defense looks fired up. They look inspired. Kyle broke his left arm this year. Bob Lee as he rolls out this time. Can't see anybody open over the middle there, and he goes to his left. Aaron Kyle was not fooled by it at all. Boy, there was a lick on the shot. Well, it is third and eight from the 15-yard line. Ahmad Rashad is left. Grim wide right. Sammy White in a slot and Foreman in motion. Oh, there's a lot of movement. Well, oh, let's see. There's an awful lot of shaking going on up front. And a legal procedure will go against Minnesota. We have a false start. Number 78, offense. Third down. Steve Riley, as you see right there in the picture. Left tackle there. Number one draft choice on, four years down. ago. Down. Down. They expect great things from him. And you can tell right away that's not John Madden, can't you? I have been. Third and 13. The ball on the 10 yard line. Chuck Foreman. Got it out to the 15 yard line. Riley trying to lead the way along with a block by Robert Miller and Tom Henderson brought him down. Tom Henderson, one of the real big playmakers, but he's not as consistent as D.D. Lewis, but he comes up with a big play so many times. Got so much speed. You saw right there. Chuck Foreman, no place to go. So Neil Claybo will be asked to root it out from his own five-yard line. Tony Hill standing on the Minnesota 46-yard line waiting for the football. And 
Clabo bangs it high. Tony Hill taking it at the 49. Matt Blair slowed him up. And at the bottom of the pile, you'll see Dumbler, and then you'll see Blaha. So Tony Hill gets it back just shy of the 40-yard line. They'll spot it at the 42 of Minnesota. 16-6, Dallas. Me? I like things different. Like to put a little spin on the ball, you know what I mean? <laughs> Here's something different. The ball pen tail. It's different from any pen I've ever used. And it writes different. Smooth, easy, natural. And it looks different. I like that, too. Because in the crowd I run around with, you got to stand out. Ball pen tell. It's like the rolling writer, only different. Who is the number one investment firm in the East? Who is the number one investment firm in the Midwest? Who is the number one investment firm in the South? Who is the number one investment firm in the West? You know who. Merrill Lynch. All around America, more investors turn to Merrill Lynch than any other investment firm. Sure, there are lots of investment firms, but there's only one Merrill Lynch. Bud Grant, who has seen Minnesota lose the football a couple of important times in the first half, but Fred Cox has come back to keep him in the ball game. It's 16-6 Dallas. That man is not unlike George Allen. The things he does to psych his team. Oh, you'd have thought everything was going against him. He's the only man in the world that thinks that the world's against him and he's still not paranoid. First and 10 from the Minnesota 41-yard line. And Drew Pearson in motion to the right. Staubach tossing out. They set up a screen for Pearson, but Gad Doug Sutherland was able to read it, and he took him down inside the 40-yard line. So Sutherland up there along with the more famous Eller, Page, and Marshall meeting at the sideline for the Vikes. The offensive line, that's Mick Tinglehoff. Some of the boys putting their heads together trying to generate something when Minnesota next gets the ball. It is 16-6, Dallas. 4.24 to go in the third quarter. Second and seven from the 38 of Minnesota. Jay Saldi, a tight end with Billy Joe Dupre. There goes Dorsett. And he's inside the 30-yard line, leaving Vikings in his wake. Sutherland and Seaman finally bring him down, and a couple of Cowboys are shaken up. Rafferty very slowly getting up. Just a big hole that time. Look at all the blocks there. Nearly missed his. That's that boy can get a lot of mileage though. He is going to gain who knows how many yards before he's finished. There's Tom Rafferty. We told you that he was shaken up. He was considered the top pulling guard in the 76 draft. He went in the fourth round for Dallas out of Penn State. Two years. Bruce Huther got his bell rung on a kickoff. We haven't seen him since, although they tell us that he'll be okay. They're hitting pretty hard. First and 10 from the Minnesota 30. Burton Lawless in there now, double sixes instead of Rafferty. Staubach to Newhouse. And he goes just shy of the 20-yard line. Carl Eller on top of him. But I think there's a flag and a penalty holding against Dallas. Will nullify the run. Newhouse had scored a touchdown from five yards. The preliminary report holding against center John Fitzgerald. Boy, as you watch the Minnesota Vikings, the poise that they have, though. So many big games they've been in, they've won their share of them, too. You won't see them do that. You'll never see them panic. Even when they should sometimes. We have holding the number 62 offense. 62, John Fitzgerald. Guilty. We take a look. Number 62 is John Fitzgerald, the guilty party. There's nothing so bad as when you're caught with the goods. Trying to keep Doug Sutherland away from Robert Newhouse. First and 20 from the Minnesota 40-yard line. 3.26 to go in the third quarter. Golden Richards in a slot left inside Drew Pearson. Sutherland chasing Staubach. Down 
Marshall comes over, and Jim Marshall brings him down. The two old-timers came into play that time. A good, strong rush by Carl Eller running him out of the pocket, and then Jim Marshall with a great speed. He still has good speed. Been Jim around so long. Just celebrated years. his 40th birthday the other day. 41st, I believe, wasn't it? Well, they have him in one book, born in 37, which would make him 40. There's another report that he was born in 36. Marshall is insane. Around 40, those years get big, Ben. <laughs> You know why? You'll cheat on one year when you get to be there. Second and 20. On the Minnesota 40-yard line. Drew Pearson wide left, Butch Johnson right. It's still Dorsett and Newhouse. Southern and trying to get at him. They set up a screen to Newhouse, and McNeil slowed him up, and Jeff Wright brought him down. Fine play by Fred McNeil, who was shaken up, number 54. He had to break the screen to pieces, and then Jeff Wright made the hit. Fine play by Fred McNeil. I'll say it was. He's coming on stronger than battery acid. The guy, the entire linebackers last week played so well for the Minnesota Vikings. You might fool him occasionally, not very often. Look at the play there, going over a blocker and holding on and waiting for help there. It was Jeff Herb Wright. Scott who threw the block at him, but McNeil was able to hurdle the block, stack up the play. That was a marvelous defensive. You like that one, didn't you? I man? love that it. That boy. Third and 20 from the Minnesota 40-yard line. Preston Pearson in there now on a wing to the right. And Preston staying in the block. Dabak down the middle. He's got Pearson inside the 15-yard line. There were four Vikings there, and somehow Drew caught it. What do you say about Drew Pearson? Year in and year out, he's been the leading Cowboy receiver for three years in a row. When the big play comes, he makes it for the Cowboys. You see it so often. Stall back with so much time to throw. Preston Pearson staying back, trying to pick up somebody right on the money with it. I guess you could say he's on target and all those cliches. But anyhow, there's old Drew Pearson going down to about the what? 13? Picked up 28 yards on the play. The ball spotted just shy of the 12. First and 10. Second time that Pearson has made the big reception to keep things alive for the Cowboys. Starbuck to Dorsett, and Dorsett fumbles, and Minnesota recovers, oh. and it was Jeff Wright who really laid a lick on Tony Dorsett, and the recovery by Fred McNeil. So the Minnesota Vikings find that somebody else will lose the football occasionally. It's still Dallas 16, Vikings 6. I can give you over a hundred reasons why the good taste of beer comes in a bottle. You get the idea. Now get the good taste of beer. It comes in a bottle. For the millions of people who need a full-size car. Introducing the 1978 Ford LTD. If you need six passenger space. If you need a roomy trunk. If you want mileage like this. Then the full-size 1978 Ford LTD could be just the car for you. LTD, a better idea from Ford. This is Tony Dorsett's second fumble of the day. Somehow you think he just lacks some concentration today for whatever reason, I don't know. Coughs it up right there when Jeff Wright hits him and Fred McNeil very alertly on it. A big play for the Vikings. It looked like Dallas was thinking in terms of putting it out of reach. Well, the Vikings have it. First and 10 on their own 12. Miller and Foreman behind Lee. And they pitch back to Foreman. Ed Jones cut him down at the 10-yard line. Too tall is too much. I just believe I'd leave him alone and just concentrate on running to the left because they're not doing anything at all with him. Ron Yeri has had his hands full all day long. Too tall Jones, number 72, is six feet nine. He looks like the Colossus of Rhodes out there right now. He's too big to put in a wax museum. What Inside a game he is playing on the left side for Dallas. Just in his fourth year. He's just learning the game, really. Well, they move the ball to the 13, second and nine. 
in motion goes Foreman. And Lee will throw it out to Robert Miller. Ed White is out there to block, but there's only one White, and there are three Cowboys. And Bob Brunig brings him down. Too much Dallas defense, Ben. One against three, not going to win very often. They're so coordinated today. Last week, they've been shot. You know, they peaked early in the year, a lot of people thought, when they were 8-0. Lost a couple games, but they got it back together again. They're the best team in the National Football Conference, regardless how this game comes out. Well, as far as coming out, we have 34 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Dallas leading 16 to 6. Dallas looking for the pass with five defensive backs on a third and eight situation. Randy White leaping in the air, so Lee had a scamper and intended for Ahmad Rashad with Barnes right there with him. It was Randy White leaping high in the air and it made Lee leave the pocket and he just threw it away. Well, Bobby Lee might not do anything to, to cause you to win but he isn't going to do much to cause you to lose. He throws this one away or I'd like to think he does anyhow trying to get to the left and gets chased out of there. There wasn't anybody open and he just threw it low that time. He's a very calculated player as he displayed last week. So the Dorsett fumble saved Minnesota on the last Cowboy drive. Now Neil Claybo has to kick Tony Hill standing on the Minnesota 45 yard line to receive and the Cowboys are coming and he got it away and stalls knocked Claybo down and roughing the kicker and it'll be an automatic first down for Minnesota. That's what happens when you have too many people rushing that putter. They hit together that time and knocked him into the kicker. David Stalls number 65 will loom rather prominently in your picture right there. Saw some collision between Stalls and somebody else saying that you can't you can't have that many people rushing the punter. Stalls, a rookie out of North Colo Colorado. Oh, that'll spot the ball just shy of the 20. Running into the kicker. He wants to go high now. Get the five. First down. So running into the kicker, and that was a legitimate one. We have seen a few good acting jobs in the course of the year shall we say marginal but calls that marginal. time he was knocked down we have two seconds to the end of the third quarter it is 16 to 6 Cowboys so a fumble recovery and running into the kicker and Minnesota still alive Foreman out of the backfield to handle the pass he got by D.D. Lewis and carried it out to the 25 yard line. So D.D. Lewis could have ruined everything, but he avoided Lewis before Bruni could finally bring him down. Just a lot of athlete right there. Well, that's the end of the third quarter. As we take one more look at Bob Lee throwing to Foreman. Okay, there's spin. Lewis. So much like Preston Pearson. Pick and roll. The end of the third quarter. Dallas 16, Viking 6. We now pause for a word from your local station. 11 years of hit songs from her show. One of the highlights when Steve Lawrence joins Carol Burnett and company tonight on CBS. If you pick an airline by the food it serves, you'll have a hard time deciding. All airline food is pretty much the same. Eastern Airlines has to do more than serve good food. Reservations has to answer the phone politely. Ground crews hustle faster. Flight attendants do even more to take care of you. And we're doing it. For the second year in a row, we've flown almost two million more passengers than the year before. There are other airlines you could fly besides Eastern. That's why we have to earn our wings every day. For somebody, Dallas and Minnesota, the winner of playing the Denver Broncos. And for the Vikings now, it is second and four from the 25. Robert Miller trying to follow a form and block. Down he goes with Thomas Henderson on his back. By the way, this Dallas ball club, a very aggressive club, during the regular year, the Cowboys were penalized 106 times, most in Dallas history. Today, they have been penalized four times for 79 yards. Minnesota, four times for 35. It wasn't always that way until they got all those young players. They used to be a finesse team, offensively and defensively. In the last two years, they've become a very physical team. Yeah, you come down here, they'll turn your hat inside out. Third and three from the 26. Lee looking left, throws and dropped by Stu Boyd. Stu! The tight end had a shot, couldn't hold on to it. Oh, no. 
They've got to get a big game out of him somehow because they're doubling those outside receivers, both sides. Stu caught 20 passes during the regular year. Meanwhile, Roger Staubach getting ready. That was a big play. Had Boyd held on to it. They pick up the first down and they're on the move. Instead, they have to give it up. Neil Claybo will be kicking. Tony Hill standing on his own 43. They're not coming, and Claybo with plenty of time, end over end to Hill to midfield. A hurdle over McNeil. Boy, what a jump. And he gets to the 41 yard line. Tony Hill's just a rookie, but he's considered the best athlete on the Dallas Cowboy team, and that's saying something. Keep him, keep your keep his name in mind. He's going to be a great football player. Boy, what a hurdler. You'll see him go right over McNeil, right there. Tony Hill, you stop. You, you're the one, you quarter pound your people. My dad's a policeman. My dad's a fireman. Oh, yeah, well, my you, you're the one, you quarter pounder people. Okay, Johnny, that's a hundred and two and a quarter pounds. Where'd you pick up that extra quarter pounder? Ah, McDonald's quarter pounder and quarter pounder with cheese. A big quarter pound of juicy lean 100% beef on a sesame seed bun. A quarter pounder person knows there's just one quarter pounder and just one place to get one. A quarter pounder person has a smile a mile around. There's lots of quarter pounder people. Just one place they can be found. You know how I first knew I was a quarter pounder person? <laughs> Every day at 12 o'clock, I turned into a McDonald's. <laughs> at McDonald's, quarter pounder people, we do it all for you. <laughs> On Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports presents the Cotton Bowl with Heisman Trophy winner Earl Campbell leading the number one ranked Texas Longhorns against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. That's Monday at 2 p.m. The Dallas Cowboys leading the Minnesota Vikings 16 to 6 and the Pokes put it in play first and 10 on the Minnesota 41. Drew Pearson goes wide right. Jay Saldy along with Billy Joe Dupree, the two tight ends, Dorsett, the deep man back of Newhouse. And it'll be Dorsett and Sutherland took the block from John Fitzgerald and made the tackle. Good play by Doug Sutherland, able to roll off Fitzgerald's block. Look how poised those Vikings are. They amaze me. We were keeping track of the number of plays been very close. Minnesota 48 plays. Dallas 46 right up this minute. So it's a little closer than that 16 to 6 would show. Tony Dorsett not quite for a carry. Second and nine from the 40 yard line. Full house backfield but there goes Golden Richards in motion. Staubach getting fine protection and he hits his man and it is Drew Pearson who took it away from Nate Wright. Seaman and Krause finally hit him, but he's a magician, Drew Pearson. And how about the way Roger Stallback drilled that in there? The coverage was there that time. Nate Wright had all the coverage in the world. He ran a very disciplined pattern, and Roger Stallback really unloaded this one. Throws it on the line. Look how perfect that was. Hit him right in the numbers, and it had to be there. Stallback now has thrown the ball 19 times and completed 12. Hook them, Horns. I'm going to stay over for that one, Ben. I bet you are. Staubach has rolled up 175 yards with his passing today. Roger keeping as he rolls around Matt Blair throws off the hands of Dupre and it is picked off by the Vikings Nate Wright. Right off the hand of Billy Joe Dupre and Nate Wright makes a big interception and the Vikings are still above water. Well, so you didn't expect Roger to unload one like that. He's played in four previously four NFC title games, and he's thrown four interceptions in those. That's his first of the day. Dallas 16, Minnesota 6. Inside this new Firestone radial tire is an improved steel cord with five million miles of developmental testing. Where once we used five strands, we now use ten strands of steel. Seven, around two, wrapped by one. A cord construction so important, 
Firestone named the tire for it. Seven, two, one. The new steel-belted radial 721. Now, from Firestone. Miller time. You've turned a dangerous ledge of new powder into a harmless pile of snow. Now's the time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. The Minnesota Vikings get their second turnover in the second half. They had recovered a Tony Dorsett fumble earlier. Now they get the interception off Dupre's hand, picked off by Nate Wright. They have first and ten on their own four. 12-36 left to go in the game. Play action fake to Chuck Foreman, and Lee's pass is knocked down. And it looked like Larry Cole, who got his hand up, he of the anonymous game the zero club I'll tell you when he comes in the ball game Larry Cole makes some big plays he's played both the defensive tackle and the defensive end and has it's kind of a call you don't expect Bob Lee to make he's not what you call a daring quarterback more calculated than anything else you see the big left hand coming up by Larry Cole those passing lanes you got to move in there and find them open Grand Garden does it better than anybody I know no, the chant begins defense now second and ten from the four after that stop by Cole Chuck Foreman out across the five, just shy of the 10-yard line, trying, if nothing else, to give Neil Claybo a little room to punt. Down at the bottom, too tall. Boy, what a game. Ed Jones. If you had to point out one person for the outstanding player in the game, it would have to be, he'd have to be under strong consideration. Ed Too Tall Jones. Too tall, by the way, is not going to be in the Pro Bowl. Third and five. Lee trying to hang on to the ball. Both backs release, and it's intended for Robert Miller. Bob Brunig was right there with him, and that will be that for the Vikings offense, at least for that series. Big play by Brunig. Pressure by Randy White. Well, that Dallas, so Dallas defense, you got to credit them. They're keeping the heat on the Vikings. They're keeping them in their own territory, giving them no field position whatsoever, and Bob Lee just having trouble finding receivers open. Anywhere. Randy White, look at that. Look at the rush there. Brunig with the coverage. Nobody open. So Tony Hill standing on the Minnesota 42 yard line, and Neil Plabo will be trying to get it out from his end zone. Mark Washington will be trying to rush him, and then he peels off. Huther comes Whoa. through, and what a punt he got off. It looked like a Raymond Guy punt. Tony Hill at the 38. Got by McNeil. Still on his feet. He got by Miller. And he is finally brought down by Studfill along with McNeil. That's Bob Boyd. That's Bob Boyd, Tony. Oh, Excuse what an me, athlete. Man. He's an athlete. He is going to be a great receiver. He Just is a rookie out of Stanford who broke Gene Washington's records out there on the coast, so you know he can play. That tells you a little something because he's no better than Gene Washington, I don't believe, anywhere. Look at the balance there. Somehow he senses that too. He's got that guy. He got to look like he's got a can break it for you. So Tony Hill brings it back to the Viking 43, and the Cowboys have it first and ten. Golden Richards wide left, Drew Pearson right, and Dorsett with his back staying in and unloads to Dupree. No catch. He short hopped the ball. Roger won't back off much, will he? Down in front. Don't forget the big round ball on CBS. The NBA, these regional games, Sunday, January 8th, 1.45 p.m. Boston, Philadelphia, Chicago, Denver, Los Angeles, Indiana, New Orleans versus Portland. The NBA on CBS. Roger's not backing off at all, is he? First down, he's throwing it. Trying to increase that lead from 16 to 10, and he wants to put a little more on there. Each team with three timeouts left. We have 11.35 left in the game. Second and 10 from the Viking 43. And it'll be Newhouse. And he just ran over Fred McNeil. But the Vikings then plugged it up. You want to see a linebacker just overrun 
You'll see number 54 go down as Robert Newhouse just went right over him. Let's see if we can find Fred McNeil here. Seaman, the block on him. This tackle in. Uh, McNeil. Wrestle down. Who is that? Alan Page down at the bottom. McNeil turns as if they get his number. Tom Landry exhorting his team to make it to the Super Bowl. And they're leading 16 to 6 with 11 minutes to go. Third and five from the 38 of Minnesota and Staubach loading up the shotgun. Eller trying to get him. Marshall has him. Eller tried to come in from the outside and Marshall wrapped him up at the 45 yard line. A big defensive play by 40 year old Jim Marshall. Well that's what you expect from your older players. You expect leadership in the crucial situations. That's what they get it from Eller and Marshall for years and years and years. Look at the big rush there by Alan Page. Marshall in on the tackle. That's funny what Bud Grant said. The older players are the hungrier players. He likes those old ones. 28 years old is what this team averages. Almost 29. Fourth and 12. Danny White will be kicking from his own 45. Angling for the sidelines. And gets it out. And we'll see where they're spotted. Almost the 17 yard line. So Minnesota will put it in play and suddenly as usual the clock becomes so very important 10 minutes and 28 seconds left and that's the story Ford introduces Futura a dramatic combination of styling and technology for 1978 and beyond Futura designed by computer modeling and aerodynamic testing it can provide excellent fuel economy and room for five passengers as well. Futura, designed for 1978 and beyond. Realistically priced for today. See your Ford dealer for a personal test drive. Dang, a winning team's got to stay ahead. So New York Life is putting in a great new series of policies offering more for you. Like better cash value? Right, and new features that make it easier to reach financial security. Freddie, there's one for us, see? I will. I am. I do. All right, let's go! New York Life Series 78. New improved policies with more for you. Ask your agent! What's your position? I'm second string, coach. Sandy, that's a shot I want. Bud Grant and the Vikings in 29 degree weather here in Dallas. A reminder that CBS will televise the final round of the Grand Prix Masters from Madison Square Garden in New York Saturday 3 p.m. Eastern Sunday at 4 p.m. The field of eight headed by Guillermo Villas, Jimmy Connors and Bjorn Borg. But right now first and ten from the 17 for Minnesota. Lead to Robert Miller and down he goes. Guess who? To Tall Jones. Ron Yeri was stretched out on the ground and the big man looms bigger and bigger as the game progresses and when is Bobby Lee going to learn stay away from too tall he is hot today he got the hot hand watch him let's see how he beats his block oh he completely manhandles here yeah he got the inside him but they didn't get outside quick enough he just not quick enough to go so they lose four on the play from the 17 to the 13 it is second down and 14 yards here comes Cole, but he unloads to Robert Miller to the 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and out of bounds. Robert Miller brings the ball across midfield to the Dallas 49 before Benny Barnes can knock him out of bounds. Minnesota on a big play to Miller. Let me see what they had on that time because D.D. Lewis was given a strong pursuit that time. Good pass rush by Dallas. Unloads and there's just so much room to run there. Boy, that's what Minnesota needed to get out of that hole. Now you got some working room. Get back in here. 38 yards on that completion to Robert Miller. First and 10, Minnesota on the Dallas 49-yard line. We have nine minutes and 42 seconds left. It is 16 to 6, Dallas. The six points for Minnesota, two field goals by Fred Cox. That's Sammy White in motion to the right. Out to Sammy White. They try to set up a screen. And he is stacked up by two tall Jones who got him from behind. Number 72, he has been everywhere. Watch the force this time by Charlie Waters. Number 41, watch him come into the picture. Sammy White in motion there, steps back. Gary out here in blocking position. 
Waters does his job, but he turns it into the flow and too tall there again. So two tall Jones, 26 years old, four years out of Tennessee State, 6'9", 265. He has been awesome. From the 46-yard line, the Vikes put it in play. Second down for Bob Lee. Both backs go out. Good block by Yari that time, and the pass, oh. no good. Intended for Bob Grimm, and Charlie Waters almost knocked him out of his uniform. Cliff Harris approves of that, too. Between the oh. two of them, I don't know of any team that has any better safety. Charlie Grimm Waters. is the perfect name for the guy who took that leg. You tell it. You tell it. There's old Cole in there. Too tall fell down on the play, enabling Bob Lee to get outside. Look at this lit hit coming in. Do that smart. Boy, why they don't get a whiplash, you never know when they're hit from behind like that. Too tall Jones, by the way, when he went down alongside Ron Yeri, he might have hurt his hand a little bit. It is third and seven from the 46. Foreman and Miller go out, and Lee, running for his life, unloads to Foreman. And Henderson tripped him up as he fell across the 45-yard line. Not enough for the first down. Thomas Henderson just did get him from behind, and that saved it. Otherwise, they have the first down. I quite agree with you. He had some running room at the time. You put Chuck Foreman out in an open field, you don't know when you're going to get him stopped. Bob Lee having to do improvise a little bit there, which is not his long suit. Randy White. Containing him in the pocket there and giving some chase. The footing must be awful bad today for some reason or another. Look at this great save there by Henderson. Kyle finishing him off. He missed the first down by about three and a half yards. Though so they'll have to give up the ball. Neil Claybo. Again, angling for the sideline, but the ball seems to hook back to Tony Hill, and the fair catch is called at the 12. You called that, and it Funny was really kind of true. a kick, wasn't it? Yes, it was. He looked like he was aiming line. for the sidelines, and the ball just seemed to hook on him. That's Randy White. And by the way, they are all playing for this one. Super Bowl 12, Sunday, January the 15th, 6 p.m. Eastern time from the Superdome in New Orleans. And the NFL today will be on from 4.30 to 6 preceding. It'll be the Denver Broncos against either Dallas or Minnesota. 7.54 left in this. Cowboys first and 10 on their own 13. Tony Dorsett and Matt Blair wrapped him up as he crossed the 10 yard line. Dorsett unofficially has carried the ball 17 times for 58 yards. There's Fred McNeil. He's played a hard game. Something you don't see too much of is injured Viking players. You know, you do their team at the first of the year, and they're going to come up at the end of the year with the same starting lineup. And you wonder how they go so injury free so, so many years. Second and 11, the ball on the 12 yard line. 16 6 Dallas, 7 13 left in the game. Roger off the hands of Jay Saldy. Saldy, who had hurt his right knee very early in the game. Could not quite hold on to it. So Jay comes out. He's a good looking guy out of South Carolina. And the odd thing about Jay Saldy, he was the only rookie free agent to stick with Dallas, the free agent in 76. But he's had to do it the hard way. Third and 11, the ball on the 11. Seven minutes and eight seconds left. Timeouts left, three for each side. The Minnesota trying to stop Starbuck now out of the shotgun and get their hands on the ball again. And it was intended for Drew Pearson, I believe, and he lost his balance. Drew and Nate Wright seemed to bump a little, and Drew almost went down. No interference called. So on a fourth and 11, the Vikings stiffen, and Randy White will have to kick it out. So the Vikings should be in pretty good field position now. Manfred Moore standing at midfield. Blaha to his left and Grimm to his right. And Danny White, who made a very big play early in the game when he ran for a first down out of punt formation, 
You can see he asked to punt for the seventh time. He punted 83 times. High snap, but he got it away. And he hangs it. Moore at his own 49, folded, and it is recovered by Jay Saldy. And the guy who hit him, one of the most hellacious hits of the year, Thomas Henderson. What a shot he gave him that time. Jay so Saldy. Saldy got the ball for a moment. I thought he had Manfred Moore's head. Saldy so active on those kicking teams. You remember in New York when he picked up one and ran it for a touchdown. Look at the shot by Tom Henderson. As I say, a big play man. D.D. Lewis on the spot, but Jay Saldy beats him good. So another turnover and a most important one, especially now a 40 yard punt. And on that lick by Henderson, the fumble by Manfred Moore, recovered by Jay Saldy. The Cowboys have it first and 10 on the Viking 35 yard line. 6.50 left to go. Staubach giving to Newhouse. Newhouse upended by Bobby Bryant who just threw a block at him to upend him at the line of scrimmage, and the little guy just kept flying for a while. Now, Vin Scully will find out if the Cowboys have any killer at them right now because they can ice this game with a touchdown right here for all practical purposes with just six minutes to go. By the way, in looking at Robert Newhouse, everybody comments on his legs, the size of his thighs. Peck Schramm wanted it pointed out. 26 inches, the thighs of Robert Newhouse. There goes Newhouse again, just running over people inside the 20, down to the 15-yard line, just leaving people in his wake. Tom Rafferty doing a great job on the trap, and Newhouse barrels to the 15. Sheer determination by Bob Newhouse. I guess he's a little bit embarrassed being in the backfield with Tony Dorsett if he didn't play well, and this year he has played extremely well. Look at the determination here, though, in the balance. A low center of gravity there. But mostly it's just determination, dogged determination. He got away from Jeff Seaman, who tried to bring him down with his hands. That's just about impossible. Though it is first and 10 from the Minnesota 15, 528 left to go in the ballgame, and the Cowboys are driving for New Orleans. Newhouse running into Sutherland. Though he stopped at the 15. Second and seven for the Cowboys, and they have everything on their side now. Well, when you speak of the Cowboys, you speak of the balance of the great organization, but offensively and defensively, special teams are just a well balanced. You can't point to any one segment. Time running down, 4.51 as they come out of the huddle. They're set to deep man. And Tony inside a block by Newhouse, but refusing to take the block was Nate Wright. A nice defensive play by Nate, number 43, shedding one block and making the tackle. Dorsett has not looked good today. He just was not ready to play football for whatever reason. Maybe it was the injuries or whatever, but he's missing these holes. Sally hurt earlier in the ball game, limping off again. Jay with a bad right knee recovered the fumble when Manfred Moore was knocked free of the ball by Tom Henderson. And Sawley comes out and for Bud Grant, stoic, unflappable. You'd never know whether he's winning or losing. In this instance, he is losing. 16-6, four minutes and two seconds left to go on the ball game. And we will have a timeout Dallas with 359 left to go in the ball game. Roger Stolberg. Roger Stallback seems to let that happen to him one time in every ball game where he's got to stop the play, call timeout, and go to the sidelines. And I'm just curious what that is about. He's talking to Landry and who's that? Jim Myers, I guess. 31 years coaching experience in Jim Myers. You never get him mentioned. He's, he's a member of the Zero Club, too. <laughs> For Roger Stallback, a 10th round draft choice by Dallas, but a very good reason why Dallas taking bows as well they should for great draft. They also gambled. 
because when Starbuck graduated from the United States Naval Academy, he had to go away for four years. That meant they were drafting a guy who wouldn't put on the uniform for almost five years, but they figured he was worth waiting for. He has been well worth waiting uh, for. I would think. Look at the eyes of the hunter right there. You can just picture Bud Grant in a duck blind someplace. Look at those eyes. They dart. Scared me to death at the press conference the other day. What icy eyes he's got. There's Goody, as they call him, Charles Goodrum. Standing on the sideline for the bikes. Starbucks numbers 12 for 23 and 175 yards. Lee 12 for 26, 155 yards. Roger runs like a sissy, doesn't he? Why? <laughs> Just trots like a sissy. <laughs> and we know it's not, of course, but he did. Jeff Seaman comes out, Nate Allen comes in. Did you wear a helmet when you played? Third and six from the 11. Golden Richards in a slot inside Drew Pearson. Staubach again from the shotgun. Inside handoff to Dorsett. He's following Scott, and he goes in for a touchdown. Inside handoff to Tony Dorsett. And away go the Cowboys. Dorsett can turn it on, though, can he? Beautiful blocking that time for the Dallas Cowboy offensive line. Herbert Scott out there in front of it. Just the way you draw it up. They had just taken Seaman out and put in Nate Allen. And so instead of the expected pass, the inside handoff, there's Scott and, and Rafferty. Rafferty. Nobody to block. It's just drawn up that way. Nate Great. Wright came over and just took out the whole game's frustrations on him. So Tony Dorsett carries it over for the big one. It is 22 to 6. Efren Herrera, numero uno, makes it 23 to 6. And the Dallas Cowboys can be looking forward to Bourbon Street, the New Orleans Superdome, and they've got a date with the Denver Broncos. All across our land, people know our brand. You can trust AC. Thanks, AC. Spark plus my AC. We'll help you smile throughout the miles. You can trust AC. Thanks, AC. Spark plus my AC. So when you want to go, we're the name to know. You can trust AC. Thanks, AC. Spark plus my AC. Firing spark plus Thanks, my AC. Thanks, AC. Fire We're known throughout the nation as Hertz the Superstar. We got the winning combination, super people, super cars, making that extra effort to meet your special needs. Getting you in, getting you out with super speed. Hertz the Superstar in rent a car. Hertz the Superstar in rent a car. You know it. On the road to the Super Bowl, that's what it says, and that's certainly the feeling here in Irving, Texas now. The Cowboys capitalizing on a fumble by Manfred Moore on a vicious hit by Thomas Henderson, and they've cashed it in as Dorsett scrambled for the TD. Efren Herrera ready to kick off. Moore is deep. He is flanked by Sammy White and Robert Miller. Instead, it's a knuckleball down the left side, and it'll be picked up by Moore at the 12 to the 15. That's all. That time it was Mike Hegman, number 58, who nailed him at the 20. And the battle is almost over, and so the Dallas Cowboy and the Minnesota Vikings shake hands on the sideline. The battle, however, is still drawn down on the field. And that's Robert Miller, who is hurt. Miller, of course, the running back who had to play for Brent McClanahan, and Robert shaken up as he tried to go back and block for Manfred Moore. He's played well, Ben, filling in. He saw very limited duty there until the injury to McClanahan, but he's played well in the last two games. The timeouts left in the game, Minnesota with three, Dallas two. Miller apparently taking a pretty good lick to the head and appeared wobbly. We saw Bruce Huther go off with a similar blow earlier in the game. We have three minutes and 43 seconds left in the game. It is 23 to 6, Cowboys. And the Vikes put it in play first and 10 on their own 20. And there is one of the big reasons why the Dallas defense has been so tough on the Vikings who have had to settle for just two field goals. Ed, two tall Jones. 
He's been too tall, too wide, and too, too fast. Too tough. First and ten from the 20. Lee trying to hit, of all people, Mark Washington. You don't usually see a defensive back try to spear that one. He just couldn't quite get to it. And the pass closer to Mark than to anybody else. Yeah, I guess he did. Bob Lee, I, you don't uh, you don't envy his position when you got to try to play catch up football. Not with that offensive team he's got against the great Dallas defense. Bob Lee is 12 for 27 for 155 yards, but he has been unable to get a touchdown. Two field goals. That has been the story. Five backs in looking for the pass for Dallas. Second and ten from the 20. Sammy White in a slot left inside Grimm, but it's a little release to Foreman and he can't hold it. He was trying to bring it with him and he left it behind. Mike Hegman there to retrieve the bobble. I'll tell you who hates this type of ball game is offensive lineman. When the defense knows you're going to pass, they still got to just put up their chin straps and go ahead and know that they they're going to get the strong pass rush. They hate it. What are you going to do? Time left in the ball game, 3:33. And for Minnesota, when you look back at the numbers, the key for the Vikings today, the same key that has haunted them all year, that surprisingly stood up and allowed them to get in the playoff. They had 18 turnovers during the year. They survived no turnovers in Los Angeles, and today it has killed them. Third and ten from the 20. Mark Keller is in there now for Robert Miller. The pass to Foreman, and he takes it out of bounds with Mark Washington in pursuit at the 29-yard line. The so Chuck Foreman handling the pass at the 29. We can take another look. Bob Lee going, just taking, he's a pretty disciplined quarterback, Ben. He's taking what they give him. It wasn't enough for the first down that time, but who knows when you get the ball to Chuck Foreman. Chuck tries to, but there's just no room to work on that sideline. So he brings up a fourth down situation. They have no choice but to go for it. Behold the turtle. The only time he makes progress is when he sticks his neck out. Ah, oh, you like that, Bill? A poet you are. Fourth and one. <laughs> and it'll be Chuck Foreman. And he has got himself the first down. The ball comes squirting out of there like a cork out of a champagne bottle. But it was after the whistle. So Foreman will pick up the first down. We have three minutes and 20 seconds remaining. You're looking at double sevens. That's big Bill Gregory. And there is Chuck Foreman. Foreman so far today has caught five passes for 36 yards. He has carried the ball 21 times for 56 yards. Remember last week he carried the ball 31 times against the Rams. I think 33 the game before the point being that they just hammer him day after game after game. And he responds game after game. First and 10 from the 32. Lee over the right side to Ahmad Rashad and Benny Barnes there to bring him down. Now Lee's going to have to go upfield with it. He hasn't got enough time to do any damage with that little short stuff like that. Picked up two. It'll make it second and eight. A reminder, the great show, 60 Minutes, will be seen in its entirety immediately following this game except on the West Coast where it will be seen at its usual time. Time remaining, 2.32. Out to the left side, and it is picked off by Thomas Henderson. He took it away from Sammy Johnson, and another turnover, although that is the first interception. Thomas Henderson, who hit Manfred Moore and caused the fumble that led to a touchdown, now it comes up with the interception. The big playmaker for the Dallas Cowboys, Tom Henderson, just an excellent ath athlete has been pointed out so many, many times. In the passing situations, you can't get near that guy. He's got too much range. And Bob, Bob Lee, Lee shaking his head, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Henderson picked off one and went 79 yards against Tampa Bay earlier this year for a touchdown. So it's first and 10 on the 41 of Minnesota. 2.23 left in the game. Robert Newhouse. McNeil tried to tackle him and couldn't, and he picked up 10 more yards. And I'll tell you, Fred McNeil was a weary, weary player who tried to tackle him. And you're not going to bring Newhouse down when your arms are like lead. 
Well, that ought to be an interesting matchup in the Super Bowl. Denver against the Cowboys, and rightfully so. Dallas Cowboys is a team that should represent the National Football Conference. And the two-minute warning. And so the Sands have just about run out for the Vikings. The Dallas Cowboys 23, the Minnesota Vikings 6. Here's a hat. Ah, you the hat. Trade you the hat for fur. <laughs> Ever since there's been an America, the prime law of business has been you have to go out and make the calls. Times have changed, and so has business. Today, Boeing jetliners are taking people all over the world. John Gillahan, pharmaceutical salesman, off to get the word on a new wonder drug. Dr. Bernice Sachs, off to check out a new therapy program. Boeing 727s, 737s, 747s. Can you imagine what it would be like if we couldn't get together anywhere in the country on a moment's notice? What's that? 747, dummy. Boeing, getting people together. Well, a gallant Minnesota Viking team not really outmatched by the Dallas Cowboys, but instead four damaging turnovers. And the Cowboys now are exactly two minutes away from New Orleans. First and 10 on that interception by Thomas Henderson. The Cowboys now trying to cash in yet another. And Robert Newhouse, Wally Hilgenberg tried to bring him down from behind, but he just ran right by Wally. Interesting to compare Dorsett and Newhouse. Prior to that play, they had each rushed for 71 yards. So you talk about a well-rounded ground attack. Both running backs equal number of yardage. The appearance of Dorsett on the field makes the defense think a little different. Newhouse taking full advantage of that. He'd been waiting for a back to take the heat off him for some time. From the 21-yard line, it is second and five Cowboys. You can see the time running down in the right-hand corner. Staubach to Newhouse. And again, he gets through weary tackle attempts. Stud still at time, uh, Stud well had his arms around him. He just slithered down. Robert Newhouse threw a shoe on that last turn with <laughs> less than a minute to go. So the Vikings with a minus 18 in turnovers during the year. Turned it over four times. Dallas turned it over twice. And the Cowboys have been able to score the Vikings only two field goals and it is 23 to 6 Dallas. And it's Newhouse again. And once more it looks like he's going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage. Studwell and Maloney converged on him but he still picked up a yard or so. And of course it's all over with 30 seconds left. And so to the Super Bowl on the 15th of January. And it will be hail to the Dallas Cowboys, hail to the Denver Broncos. And time will run out without another play. The Super Bowl right here on CBS from the Superdome, January the 15th. The Dallas Cowboys, who won a Super Bowl when they beat Miami 24-3, We'll have the chance to win yet another. We are just a few seconds away, 23-6, Dallas. <coughs> Roger swallowed a crayon, the frogs loose, I've got heartburn, acid indigestion. There, there. Who are you? Mother Tum. <gasps> Can you help me, Mother Tums? Here. Tums for the tummy. Are they strong? Tums are strong medicine. For neutralizing acid, Tums are one-third stronger for the money than the other eating tablets. Mother Tums, I'm relieved. Oh, <laughs> there he is. Oh, you found him. Tums, one-third stronger. With 13 seconds left, Ralph Neely just came out, got bear hugs from his teammates. He will play yet another game in the Super Bowl as the Cowboys let the time run out. The Dallas Cowboys, Tom Landry and company have done what just about everybody figured they would do 
They beat the Vikings 23 to 6. And to a gallant Minnesota ball club, had they not done what they had done all year, they might have been a lot closer. But of course, the four turnovers really killed them to such a strong machine as Dallas. We'll have locker room reports, so don't go away. Even though the final paragraph of the game story has been written, there are sidebars and notes to come. But let it be duly noted from Dallas, the Cowboys 23 to 6. These figures will get that bank loan. Let the figures speak to the bankers, Dad. Your breath. My breath? Try scope. It works. I'll use my mouthwash. There. You smell medicine. My mouthwash fights bad breath. Like antiseptic, scope gets your breath clean, plus your breath's minty fresh, not medicine -y. I'll try it. <sighs> clean and fresh. <laughs> Scope's a great <laughs> asset. Scope fights bad breath. Scope doesn't give medicine breath. Carrie, did you unpack my dandruff shampoo? You must have gotten lost in the moon. But here's my beauty shampoo. Mmm, nice mild smell. What will it do for my dandruff? Just wait. Great looking hair. Yeah, but my dandruff. Use my shampoo every time and it'll control dandruff. Maybe better than yours. Come on. Head and shoulders. Now what do you think? I think I wouldn't make a move without it. Or you. Head and shoulders. Strong against dandruff. Gentle on your hair. There have been some great players in the game today. Let's meet one of them. Two tall Jones will go to Gary Bender. Yeah, what a job you guys did today. Held them without a touchdown. That's right. You know, just like last week when we played Chicago, we knew that we had to contain Walter Payton up front. Well, this week it was the same thing with Chuck Foreman. And our line played a hell of a game, I think. And uh, as a result, we're in the Super Bowl. You know, they were running your side today, but you were hanging in there. Well, that right-handed team, and, and, you know, Jethro and I discussed it all week long. We were hoping they'd run outside because, you know, I feel like with Jethro, and I can gamble a lot and he'll cover for me, and that's what was happening today. You know, the Vikings are quite a team, though. They hung in there. It looked like they still had a couple of chances to come back. Well, we knew they'd do that. A lot of teams would have given up, you know, after the third quarter, but the Vikings have been there before. They know what it takes to, to win it, and the people in Minnesota, I think, should really be proud of them because they hung in there and fought all the way. Ed, did you notice Denver won? I'm sure you did. Yes, and I'm really happy for Denver, and uh, I think it'll be a, a totally different game from the game we played them here the last game of the regular season. They were playing without Craig Martin, and Craig, I think, is an excellent quarterback, and I expect a tough game. You were in the Super Bowl in 75. You get to go back again. That's right, and I love it. <laughs> and, you know, a game like this, the Vikings came in. Everybody said they shouldn't be here, that old veteran team, but you guys, you feared them. Well, you know, I was afraid when they uh, gave us an 11-point favorite. You know, I knew how it would affect those guys, and I figured they'd come in here really fired up. So what we tried to do was to knock that fire out of them the first half. We'll see you in New Orleans. Thank you. All right, now let's go to Brett Musburger. All right, Gary, thank you very much. Jimmy the Greek, it is the Dallas Cowboys and the Denver Broncos. And who do you favor in the Super Bowl on January 15th? Well, the last time the National Football Conference was favored was when Dallas was in a Super Bowl. And when they beat Miami, so we're going to make them favored one more time. By about how much, Greg? Well, what's one of those kicks mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a field goal. I think that's three points. That's right. <laughs> Irving should be a whale of a ball game. Uh, those two teams met in the last regularly scheduled game of the season, 14 to six, I believe. Dallas finally won it. But the Craig Morton sidebar, so many stories to that Super Bowl. You, you can take that last game of the year, Brent, and throw it right out the window because of the Super Bowl game, as Jack Whitaker indicated in his pregame analysis, it's a second season. And when you go to a championship game like that, you have to play literally, literally one play at a time. There was a big controversy in the Oakland-Denver game today. Was it or wasn't it a fumble when Lytle was trying to go over? They ruled no fumble on the play, and Denver retained possession. But it is a wild controversy. John Madden has complained, and the league has issued this official statement that we got from UPI. The official, Ed Marion, who was the headlinesman, said that progress had been stopped on that play. He blew the whistle, and then, according to Marion, the player lost possession as he was falling backward. But I think Jimmy and also Irv that uh, that controversy is not over with this statement. We saw the uh, the play and the way we saw it, it looked as though that he'd been hit at the line of scrimmage and the ball had popped out. I couldn't tell who recovered the fumble. I, I assumed it was a fumble, but the only question I had in my mind is to who recovered it. I don't Let's think... face it, they blew it again. 
Well, I don't think we should demean the tremendous job that the Denver Broncos have done all absolutely year because not. of absolutely the one call, not. however, in that game. They that has a Super Bowl game. That's right. Absolutely. And they deserve to win. And we don't know what might have happened even if they'd given the ball to Oakland. The NFL today like will continue it, on CBS in just a moment. America's best-selling new car in history, the new Ford Fairmont. What's behind Fairmont's success? Fairmont's roominess, more room for the money than any other car. Fairmont's mileage, highest EPA mileage rating of any midsize car. Fairmont's price, lowest sticker price of any midsize car. Test drive America's best-selling new car ever at your Ford dealer, where the better ideas keep coming. No one leaves this locker room till I find out who's been using my safeguard. Bob, your deodorant soap hasn't even been opened. Oh, what are you going to do, sue me? I want all that safeguard protection. Damn, man, I'm a sucker for lather, and safeguards deodorant lather is different. For lather and protection, people love safeguard so much, it's always the smallest soap in the house. Larry, since we all love lather and protection, next week, bring a bigger bar of safeguard. To tell us what it all means today, let's go down on the field to Jack Whitaker for his perspective. Jack? Thank you, Brent. I'm not sure what it all means other than what everybody knows. That Dallas goes to the Super Bowl, and that's the way it should be because Dallas is the best club in the NFC. And in this year, when it's become embarrassingly clear that the NFC is below the AFC in quality, it is absolutely necessary that Dallas should have won their way to the Super Bowl. At the very least, the Cowboys will not embarrass the NFC. It also proves, I guess, that the track record, if you look up past performances, they pay off. Denver and Dallas are the winningest teams this year in their records, and they're going to meet in New Orleans. It should be a classic confrontation. Dallas going there for a fourth time, which ties the record held by Minnesota. Denver, of course, playing for the very first time. Experience against a very emotional team who is higher than the city in which they play. So Dallas against Denver. I think it should be a very interesting and refreshing Super Bowl in two weeks, and we'll see you all there. You too, Brent. Thank you very much, Jack. I would have to agree. So on the afternoon of January 15th, from the Superdome in New Orleans, it will be the Dallas Cowboys in the Super Bowl for the fourth time against the Denver Broncos. And why not? Those two teams overall have the best records in the league this year, won 14 times and lost only two. Right now, let's go down to the Dallas Cowboy locker room and Tim Ryan. Tim? Thank you, Brent. Here with Coach Tom Landry. You must be a happy man today. This young team of yours performed so well, especially your defense and special teams. Yes, we thought we thought we had an excellent defensive game today. Uh, we were able to contain them most of the day, and, our, and then our specialty came through with Danny White running and a, a great hit there that set up the last touchdown for us. Uh, offensively, we weren't quite as good today as we were last week, but overall, the team played very well. How did you prepare uh, for this game against Bob Lee as compared to preparing for, uh, preparing for a game against Fran Tarkenton? Well, it's a lot different with Fran Tarkenton because you have to you have to get the rolls. You know, he, he's excellent at rolling, hitting his tight end, taking care, hitting Foreman, and just a little different. Uh, Lee's back in the pocket more. He throws more from the pocket. Did it make it easier deeper. for you? Uh, I don't know. I'm sure it makes it easier not when you're not playing Tarkenton. And I, I would want to take this opportunity to congratulate the Vikings. You know, they did a tremendous job after losing a great quarterback like Tarkenton and getting into the championship game. And you have to give them all the credit. Now you've got Denver to face. Uh, I'm sure you weren't spending most of the afternoon watching that game. How much did you see? I don't know whether we're far enough away from Denver <laughs> and New Orleans or not, but I'm glad we're not playing them up in Denver because they sure have an enthusiastic people. And they played a great, had a great year, and they played super from what I saw. And I saw half the ball game today, and they were really all over everybody. Should make an exciting Super Bowl. Thank you, Coach Tom Landry. Let's go back to Brent Musburger. Tim, thank you so much. What a contrast. Tom Landry, the only coach in the history of the Dallas Cowboys. The Denver Broncos have been a struggling franchise. This is the first time that they've ever been in the NFL playoffs. And suddenly, they wind up going all the way to the Super Bowl under Red Miller. Many folks around the NFL said that Red Miller would never make a good head coach because he was too much one of the boys. And oh, how wrong Red Miller proved everyone this year. And on the afternoon of January 15th, it will be Denver and Dallas for the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 12, and CBS will have all the action. 
But that's just the beginning, because tomorrow afternoon, from the Cotton Bowl, the showdown for number one, the unbeaten Texas Longhorns against the once-beaten Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. They'll kick it off tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And so for Vince Scully, Alex Hawkins, Jimmy the Greek, Irv Cross, Tim Ryan, Gary Bender, and everyone else who helped us make this quite a day for the NFC, I'm Brent Musburger wishing you all a very good evening. The NFL Today is a presentation of CBS Sports. This is CBS.